Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku was trained by the son of Sparta. If you guys enjoy this movie comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist. The author of the story Night Spirit 152 from Fanfiction Net. So let's start the video. In some high school. Alright. You students are all third years so you should all think seriously about your future and careers. So I should hand you back these high school applications. The rather forgettable teacher then starts throwing said applications into to the air. But I know you all want to become demon hunters, so what's the point? He finishes with a smile. Within the classroom, all of the students start cheering displaying their quirks. The exception being an ash blonde and plain looking student. Yes yes, you all have excellent quirks, but quirk use within the school is prohibited so settle down. The teacher yelled at his students. Hey teach, don't group me in with these bunch of extras. I'm the real deal. These losers will be lucky just to get into some crap demon hunter course. This statement came from the arrogant looking blonde. This riled up all of the other students, you think you're better than us Bakugo. One of the extras yelled, bring it on, I could beat all of you, was Bakugo's fiery rebuttal, which silenced the majority of the class. Katsuki Bakugo was an ash blonde standing around 5'8 in height, though if you look closely you would see bits black sprinkled through his hair from early usage of his quirk, explosion. He had red eyes which would darken to bloody crimson when angered and held the look of a delinquent, even though he was near the top of his class academically. Yes Katsuki Bakugo, you have exceptional high test results, and you're trying to get into UA high school correct? Maybe you will get in the teacher read of the paper. A kid with green hair began to bury his head into his notebook. He's going for the national school. One of the so-called extras whispered to another, sparking a wildfire of conversation. I heard it's only a 2% acceptance rate. That school is impossible to get into that school. Katsuki then got up. Yui is the only school worthy of teaching me. I'll rise above all of you extras and become a famous demon hunter. Even better than All Might him before he could finish his rant his teacher then also read off. Izuku Midoriya you also wanted to go to Yui too. The entire class went silent. Katsuki's eye twitched in annoyance and Izuku paled. The class then broke into laughter. Haha, Midoriya you think only good grades can get you into that school don't they have a rule against the quirkless humans applying to Yui actually t they got rid of that rule this year s so I could actually apply. Midoriya stammered out his reasoning when suddenly two exploding fists came down onto his desk. Deku, you piece of shit. Are you fucking trying to compete with me? Bakugo looked at him with such intense rage, as if he were ready to murder him in cold blood. It actually got most of the class to calm down from their hysterics. Izuku Midoriya was a greenette standing at around 5 5 which was a bit shorter than most of his classmates. He has emerald green eyes that would seem to glow sometimes when he shows his determination. Ridiculed for his quirklessness and lack of demonic power he doesn't have much self-confidence and was nicknamed Deku by his former best friend, now bully, Bakugo. He is willing to go above and beyond if it meant becomes a demon hunter. Our plain protagonist then starts shaking his head in fear and waving his hands back and forth. And no Kakin, I'd never try to compete with you. It's just been my dream for a long time. I'll destroy you. Back you go. Enough sit down. Now class it's time I start our lesson. The foul-mouthed blonde begrudgingly made his way back to his seat, Midoriya silently thanking the fact that class was now starting. Later, it was the end of the day and most students had left the classroom as well as the teacher, leaving only Midoriya, Bakugo and his goons. Midoriya was packing up, when Bakugo came up to him. Hey, nerd we aren't done Katsuki then proceeds to swipe the notebook Izuku was about to put away. Ha, huh? what is that his diary? Goon 1 asked Demon Hunter Notes for my future volume 13. Goon 2 said, don't tell me you're taking notes on how to be a demon hunter so pathetic. Bakugo then blows up the notebook, causing Midoriya to scream and then hurled it out the window, the book landed in a koi pond below the class. Most great devil hunters show great potential early on. You can just look at them and know they are destined for greatness, Bakugo continued. I'll be the only one from this shit school to get into Yui and people will talk about me like that. That's not ego talking I just know I'm that good. He placed his hand on Midoriya's shoulder, smoke rising from his hand. So do me a favor and don't think about applying. He began to walk away. If you really want to be a devil hunter so bad I got a good tip. Take a swan dive off the roof and pray in the next life you get a quirk. Katsuki laughed. At that point, Midoriya had enough and was about to tell him off. But then Katsuki reminded him how much he greatly feared this guy. Got a problem. Katsuki's voice had an edge to it, and his face held malice. Izuku immediately tensed up, making his point clear. The bully and his underlings walked out of the room completely. About five minutes later he retrieved the journal from the fish pond it landed in and proceeded to walk home, alone. Stupid Kakin, what if I had listened to you, would you still be laughing? Murmuring as he was under a tunnel when he got jumped by a sludge demon. The demon was a sickly sewer green. 
It had nasty yellow teeth and disgusting glazed yellow-green eyes. Izuku noticed it had several other sets of eyes around its torso. The creature poured itself onto the young boy, cackling as it did so. A medium-sized invisibility cloak, thanks kid you're my hero. Midoriya started to struggle against the ooze body of the demon, pulling, tearing trying to get the oxygen his body needed. However, his vision began to fade. No, this can't be it. It was at that moment that a large gust of wind blew the demon off of Izuku. A white-haired man in a red coat suddenly walked into view, wielding a blue short sword in hand. The man called out. Well kid you're lucky I was around. The man put his sword away, then walked over and realized Izuku was unconscious and then lightly kicked him in the ribs. Izuku stirred a bit but didn't wake right away. The man then noticed the scorched and soggy book and took a look into it. Surprised that it contained perceptive knowledge on many pro-demon hunters, he signed a free page. The white-haired man then bent down and slapped Izuku across the face. This action got Izuku to shoot up immediately, taking in his surroundings making sure he wasn't dead. His eyes then locked onto his savior. The man was in a faded red coat, brown pants, black combat boots, a black t-shirt and wearing fingerless gloves. His white hair ended at the neck and he had some stubble starting to forming a beard. Why you're D. Dante, T the world famous S-class demon hunter. He picked up his notebook. Could you please sign he cut himself off when he saw the book was already signed. Izuku the proceeded to make 90 degree bows. Thank you very much. It will be a treasured family heirloom. Dante smirked giving a shrug. Ah kid you're making me blush he then noticed the sludge demon was nowhere to be seen and decided to pursue it. Well kid it was nice to meet you but I've got a demon to kill Dante was about ready to use an air hike and air trick to leave. But Midoriya jumped on him last minute yelling, wait, I have so many questions. And he too teleported off with Dante. A split second later they both fell onto a rooftop. The extra weight hitting the older man's back made him fall over. Annoyed Dante turned to Izuku, dusting off his coat. Look, kid, as much as I love the fans, this is just too much. He turned to leave, hoping the kid would get down safely himself. When he heard the kid shout out, Do you think a quirkless and pure human can become a devil hunter? The cry was desperate, Dante could tell. The snow-haired hunter turned back to look at Izuku. His annoyance lightened up a bit as he glanced at the quirkless child with some pity. It's been my dream for as long as I coup Dante cut him off with a long sigh. Listen kid, I don't need your life story, but I will answer your question. No kid, I don't think a pure quirkless human child doesn't stand a chance in that world. Without a quirk or even demonic heritage, there's only so much you can do. Dante began walking to the edge of the roof. You know, being a cop isn't as stylish but it's still a good profession. Be a little more realistic kid. With that he jumped off the roof back to pursuing the demon, leaving a greatly depressed child behind. Later, I guess Kakin and all the others were right. I should have woken up a long time ago Izuku depressingly muttered to himself as he was heading home, with his dreams shattered and on the brink of tears. Well, he was on his way supposed to be on his way home but he was unconsciously walking into the presence of danger. Before he knew it, he was staring at a lot of fire. He looked up to see what was going on. Pro hunters had blocked off the area and had to wait for backup due to none of them having good quirks to deal with the fire. Midoriya gazed at the scene. The demon that tried to kill him before was now suffocating his childhood friend, while Bakugo was wildly releasing explosions. The pros tried to tell him to calm down so they could help him, but it was ineffective. One thought was running through Izuku's head at this point. This is my fault. If I didn't distract Mr. Dante earlier he could have taken this thing down. Izuku then bolted toward the danger, ignoring the yells of the pros telling him to stop. From a nearby rooftop, Dante finally arrived at the scene. For an actual piece of shit, this guy can really cause a commotion. His eyes widen when he sees the same quirkless kid from before charging at the demon, throwing his backpack at its face stunning it. Taking advantage of his time the kid started desperately clawing at the sludge, a glow radiating from his eyes. The demon hunter clad in red was surprised, but then started to smirk. People just love proving me wrong, huh? He then jumped down, taking out two devil arm swords. The blue sword from earlier and its brother blade, a red short sword. Agni, Rudra let's get to work. Dante jumped into the fray, slashing Rudra around creating a small tornado blowing the monster off of Katsuki. He then teleported over to both of the boys and threw them back, being caught by a hunter with a plant-like quirk. He then looked back at his target and plunged both of his blades into the ground, creating a streak of fire disintegrating the demon. Impressive as always, Dante, both swords said to their wielder. Slightly annoyed his twin swords, seemingly disappeared and were replaced by a claymore with a demon skull at the hilt, I really should enforce the no-talkie rule again. He shrugged a little, turning around to the bystanders, who's your hero? He waved to the audience. They broke into a cheer, in awe about how completely and utterly awesome he was. While he was soaking in the glory he saw the two kids he rescued, one looking extremely pissed and the other getting the verbal lashings of a lifetime. Yeesh, better wrap this up quick. 
I got the offer of the century for that kid later. Izuku was now properly on his way home. The pro hunter had scolded him about running into danger without a license, much less a quirk. Katsuki had also come to yell at him. Listen here Deku, you might have tried to play hero, but I don't owe you anything. I'm gonna be the best pro hunter and you better top thinking you even have a ghost of a chance at competing with me. With that the ash blonde turned his heel and walked away. That actually cheered Izuku up, seeing his old friend's determination. Good to see you're as fired up as ever Kaken. Sigh I guess it's time to start preparing for a more realistic future. Just then Dante appeared in front of him. This actually startled our green-haired protagonist, causing him to fall on his butt. Mr. Dante, W why are you here? And H how did you get away from the paparazzi? Izuku questioned. Kid if I couldn't at least manage to get away from photographers and fangirls I would have died a long time ago. He laughed. And don't call me mister, I'm only 35. Way too young for that title. Dante then extended his hand out to the kid and picked him up. Kid, you proved me wrong today. Izuku's eyes widened. It doesn't matter what your heritage is, or even if you have a quirk. It's the heart of a human that makes us pro demon hunters strong. Tears began to well up in Midoriya's eyes. You kid can become not just a demon hunter, but a damn good hero. Izuku had lost all feeling in his legs and was on his knees. Hey, kid I got an offer for you. Izuku looked up, with blurred vision. Want to inherit my power? I can go into detail right now, but do you want this chance? Izuku was shocked. He was offering the power of the greatest demon hunter. This couldn't be real. Without much hesitation, he nodded vigorously. Yes Dante, I'd be honored to take on your power, he said with conviction. The red hunter smirked at Izuku. I'm starting to like you kid. Meet me at Dagaba Beach tonight around 11. Then we'll get you on the track to being a demon hunter. Also, come up with an excuse to why you'll be out late so your folks don't get worried. Dante called out as he turned and left. Izuku nodded and then went home, ate dinner and told his mother he'd be sleeping at a friend's house that night. She had eyed him a bit suspiciously, due to him not really having many friends, but let him go. Dagaba Beach was practically a dump. Natural wave currents collected trash here and as a result, people eventually started throwing their own trash here. He couldn't imagine why Dante would want to meet here. He looked at his phone, it was about 10.50. Ten minutes later his soon-to-be mentor showed up. He waved at him, hello mister, or I mean, Dante. Said man gave the boy a two-finger wave. Hey kid, you ready to become my student? Successor, I don't know, you ready to inherit my power? Dante asked. Yes Dante, I am ready. But could you explain what we're doing here or how I'm supposed to inherit Izuku didn't get to finish before Dante had whipped out his claymore, rebellion, and impaled him through the heart. Izuku coughed out blood, eyes trembling, his vision fading. He could see his blood dripping onto the floor. W-Y is all he could choke out. Why? Blood dripped from his mouth and wounds. All he could do was stare, tears beginning to form in his eyes. Of course, this was too good to be true, being able to inherit someone else's power. How ridiculous. Time seemingly stood still, the world around Izuku starting to go black, until Izuku felt a surge of energy pour out from his chest, green static coursing around his body. The young man then let out a cry as he felt his body undergo a transformation. In a flash of green light, a demon was standing in Izuku's place. The demon was covered in green and black scales. Its torso was colored a midnight black, with silver growths that resembled a rib cage. Its arms and legs contained a few edges with a red glow. The devil's face was pitch black with orangish yellowish eyes. There were more silver growths around the head that looked like styled spiked hair. Green bat-like wings protruded from his back and retract under his arms making them look like part of a coat. Dante withdrew rebellion from Izuku's chest. Feeling indifferent about the fact that he just stabbed the teenager, Izuku lifted his now clawed hands to his face, staring in awe at them. He could feel the immense power within him. He felt unstoppable, until his double trigger deactivated and he fell face first into the sands of the filthy beach. Light jabs from Dante's boots mere moments later are what woke him up. The plain-faced Greenette shot up gasping for air staring incredulously at his mentor. A few strips of his hair had turned white. It gradually faded back to green though. Why did you just impale me? Even if that was part of your plan you could have warned me. At this, the red-clad swordmaster had to laugh. Well kid, I have a sense of style. I had to add a flair to this scene and make it look good. As he gave his student a shrug. Izuku had to sweat drop at this. I'm training under a madman. W why did you stab me though? Wouldn't that have K killed me? Izuku brought his hand to his chest. Kid, that's how a partial demon unlocks devil trigger. And how other demons can empower their comrades if they do choose a successor to their power. He then stabbed his sword into the ground. But I thought I was purely human, the doctor said Izuku was cut off. DNA tests aren't exactly 100%, so being able to see if someone is completely human shouldn't be too different from that. A demon could have snuck somewhere into your family tree. A slightly panicked thought then made its way into Dante's head. You did make up an excuse for your parents right, you didn't just sneak out right. The pro asked his student. 
Yes, at dinner I told my mother I'd be sleeping at a friend's house tonight. The son of Sparta nodded his head. All right kid here's the plan. The UA entrance exam is in 10 months, yeah. Dante then tossed Izuku a blade he had pulled out of thin air and continued, so we're going to be cramming about 20 of years of demon hunting into this time. He then readied his own blade. For 10 months you're going to be put through pure hell. Every weekend we will fight from dawn until dusk. Every weekday after school and homework, you'll come to meet me at my shop, the Devil May Cry Japanese branch. That's where I'll teach you in the use of various forms of weapons. Think you can handle that? A fire was lit in Izuku's eyes. He lifted his blade and stared at his reflection within it. He then let out a grunt of acknowledgement. Didante if I couldn't at least handle that much I wouldn't be fit to be called your successor, would I? The green devil got into a fighting stance, his generic blade drawn. Ha, I like your style kid. Now get ready for the worst 10 months of your life starting now. Dante then lunged at his student. Days later, during the course of the first few days, Izuku was nearly pushed to his limits and beyond. His spares with Dante were basically him just getting gutted like a fish until he learned how to defend himself from the specific attack, and then his teacher would use a brand new move against him. He was glad that unlocking Devil Trigger had given him advanced healing. His spares with Dante had also been gradually increasing his Devil Trigger limit. His mentor had explained that DT was like a quirk. The more it was used and pushed it would grow stronger over time. After a few hours of being Dante's punching back, he'd actually get tips to executing some of these moves. He picked up easily on some techniques like Stinger and One Called Drive, an ability that had Izuku channel demonic energy into his sword and relay it in a projectile formed like a crescent. If there was any upside to his near-death experience, he was also gaining confidence. How he was even less afraid of his middle school bully, but not by much. At the DMCJB, things were less. Pori, Dante had off started to teach him about the use of firearms and as such let him practice with his pistols Ebony and Ivory, as well as his shotgun Coyote he even taught Izuku his weapon storage technique. The green-haired boy was being taught in a more formal method on the use of weapons. His lessons were mainly focused on swords and finding ones he was comfortable with using. He had also dabbled in other melee weapons like scythes, nunchucks, daggers, axes, whips, etc. Nine months later, Izuku had become efficient at the skills he had learned. He had mastered the art of the blade, but he was still nowhere near as good as Dante and could use any firearm he came in contact with. He had also managed to increase his devil trigger state to 10 minutes. It wasn't the bulk of his training. As a result, the results were lower. The young boy's boy was now toned as hell and added the bonus of his fights with Dante. His body was lean but full of lean muscle. He was now taller, only a centimeter shorter than Bakugo. He could now manage to stand his ground in fights for 5 minutes before he was overpowered by his teacher. Overall he was making intense progress. Hell, Dante even improved the kid's taunting skills. One month later, kids made some real progress these past few months. Can't say I'm not impressed. Dante got off his motorcycle. He was holding a briefcase and a guitar case. It was currently the break of dawn on the day of the entrance exam, and the red coat devil had brought gifts for his student. He walked over from the parking lot towards the beach. He had told his apprentice to meet at the beach. He had a few gifts for the kid. He down and spotted his student on the beach, an arrogant smile on his face. He was wearing a grey t-shirt and some black jeans, still keeping his signature red shoes. What's up? He shouted out. Kid, in the small time frame we've trained, you knocked my expectations out of the damn park. Dante came down to greet Izuku. He could see his student was holding back tears of joy. Izuku, in the last 10 months you went from a crybaby nerd to a crybaby nerd that's going to be the best devil hunter since, well, me. That's when he brought up the briefcase and pulled off the guitar case on his back. That's why I bought you some back-to-school supplies. Izuku first took the briefcase and opened it, and his mouth gaped in awe. Inside the case, there were two pitch-black pistols like ebony and ivory. Engraved into the side of one of them were the words property of Imidoria and a metallic green metal. Dante gestured to the guns their high-caliber automatic pistols like ebony and ivory. The left ones made for precision and accuracy, the other speed and power. Izuku nodded and left the guns in the case for now and then took the guitar case. It surprisingly contained a sword, a claymore-like rebellion, but with major differences. Instead of there being a rib cage and skull design on the hilt and guard, there was a religious cross design with a circle around it connecting to the hilt and blade. Izuku lifted the sword out of the case and noticed there was also a black overcoat like his mentor's and a harness that was beneath the claymore. It was red, with a slot big enough to hold the sword on his back and additional holsters for his guns. It's a sword-like rebellion, made from a fine demonic metal and perfect for demon slaying Izuku looked up at Dante tears welling in his eyes. Dante could only shake his head at seeing his crybaby student. Dante I I don't what to say, thank you. He choked out. His mentor sighed, a genuine smile plastered on his face. You can thank me by giving these puppas a name. 
Izuku's eyes widened. That's right kid, they're your weapons. You get to name them. All self-respecting demon hunters name their weapons. Midoriya nodded. The green-haired team then took some time to think of names for his weapons. The sword's name will be Insurgents and my guns will be Bolt and Ricochet. He put on his coat and placed his weapons and harness back in their respective cases. As the green-haired, plain-faced, demon hunter in training was packing, Dante began to speak up. All right kid, UAS exam is today so go back home, eat an adequate breakfast, and kick ass. He clapped a hand to Izuku's shoulder. And kid, don't overthink things. It's good to form a plan. But remember sometimes you just can't think in a fight. Just go with the flow and taunt to flaunt. With that last piece of advice, the white-haired pro turned around and gave his student a two-finger wave. Good luck, Izuku. He teleported away. Izuku stood there for a moment, a smile on his face and a determined fire in his eyes. I won't let you down, Dante. He picked up his gifts and made his way home. He needed to get ready. Then he sweat dropped at his mentor's last piece of advice, taunt to flaunt. One breakfast later, our plain-faced hero was walking up to the exam center and looked at the building and smiled. He was wearing the same attire as before but was now wearing the harness around his coat. It was still empty because he used his demonic energy to store insurgents, bolt, and ricochet. He stood there a breeze blowing through his hair and on the tail end of his coat, a look of conviction on his face. Izuku took a breath. The camera zooms close to his face. This exam determines my future. I prepared ten months for this with the world's greatest demon hunter, and I've inherited his power. The screen pans out and we see him trembling slightly. So why am I so nervous? He yelled within his mind. Move it you useless bastard. Izuku straightened and turned to see Katsuki walking up. The green devil shifted aside, a nervous sweat dripping down his face. Good luck with the exam. He didn't stutter this time. But this was Bakugo after all, he had bullied him for years. Whether or not Katsuki heard him, he didn't acknowledge Izuku any more than the initial greeting. That was rude. With that, Izuku regained his determination and started to head inside as well. This is my first step as a demon hunter. I'll become one worth being the successor to Dante then he tripped over the first step or I'll just die. He then decided to brace for impact, only to not kiss the ground with a faceplant. He opened his eyes to see that he was floating. Ooh, it could only blink. Hey, sorry that I used my quirk on you without your permission. I just thought you could use some help. A feminine voice came from behind him. He looked up to see a girl with a round face, brown eyes and shoulder-length brown hair. She helped him position himself upright. Well, I hope you do well on the test. She then waved and entered the building. I talked to a girl. Izuku felt pride, even though the kanji for didn't actually speak appeared in front of him. He also walked inside. The practical exam grounds. Izuku had finished the written proportion of the test and already received instructions for how to get points in the practical portion of the test. He was also still feeling slightly embarrassed about being called out about his muttering when present Mike was giving the instruction. Izuku took out his weapons and placed them in their respective holsters. The examinees were provided weapons for this test if they needed them, and a box of miscellaneous weapons at the entrance of the grounds. He saw a few people take guns, swords, and anything else they need from the box, waiting for the exam to begin. Izuku decided to stretch a little, there wasn't much else he could do. He did some stretches for a solid minute when he noticed the nice girl from before that saved him from tripping. It's the cute girl from before. I better go thank her for earlier and wish her luck. He was about to execute his plan when suddenly he felt a hand on his shoulder. Izuku looked back to see the owner of the hand was none other than the bluish-haired glasses-wearing stickler that called him out. That girl over there is trying to concentrate and prepare. I won't allow you to distract her, he said with a serious face. A vein bulged in our protagonist's forehead. This guy, I swear to God. He was about to tell him off when he heard present Mike shout out, Go. The teens all look at him. You think there's a countdown in a real fight? This is a demon hunting school. Get to it, little listeners. That simple explanation got everyone running. And Izuku more or less trampled. He got up and coughed a little and started to catch up with the others. Our green devil activated devil trigger and unfolded his wings to help his chances of keeping up. He drew insurgents and began looking for bots to destroy. The green-haired half-demon, still in devil trigger, had found himself near some rubble in the fake city where he encountered a robot. He quickly slashed it in half. That was only one point and it's already been two minutes, I gotta hurry up. He charged onward. He shot another two one-pointers with his pistols and threw his sword into the back of a three-pointer that was about to attack a sparkly blonde. The pressure was on as Izuku heard people shout out the number of points they were getting. Way to make others feel self-conscious his musing was brought to an end when he felt a large rumble and gasped when he saw a giant robot break into their section of the exam area. It was the zero-pointer. That's the zero-pointer, he yelled out. Shaking his head, trying to calm himself, he rationalized. I should move out of the way. I don't need to fight that thing. I'd be wasting the little time I have left. He was about to move when he suddenly heard a cry. 
Izuku turned to see that the brown-haired girl that helped him earlier was trapped and was in the path of the Zero Pointer. Her legs seemed to be caught under a large piece of rubble. As others started fleeing, he flew over at fast speeds to help her. Hey, are you okay? Can you move at all? He asked with urgency as he tried to lift the rubble off of her. The girl grunted. No, even if you did move the debris I think my ankle is twisted. Time was counting down as the Zero Pointer got closer. Come on, come on. Think Izuku. What would Dante do? He then remembered his mentor's words. Kid don't overthink things. Sometimes you can't think in a fight. Taunt to flaunt these words echoed in his head as he spread his wings. He flew over to a nearby building. Hey you, the overgrown toaster. To Izuku's surprise, the robot did turn to his direction. Why don't you pick on me? Midoriya then gave the come at me hand gesture. The zero pointer sent a giant fist crashing down on the boy in response. The part of the skyscraper it cracked under the impact, but was sturdy enough to not fall off. As the mechanical menace lifted its hulking fist, it was revealed nothing was there. Yo, metalhead, time to make like a car in. The robot turned to fist and saw Izuku standing on top of it. A green glow and red static flowed through insurgents and slashed his blade in a diagonal arc. Drive, he shouted out, as a large arc of green demonic energy laced with red lightning shot at the robot, which not only cut it in half, but also pushed its corpse back, so it didn't crush the person he was trying to say. He was starting to carefully descend until his devil trigger deactivated. He had gone over his limits and poured too much energy into drive. Izuku was falling fast and he knew his chances of survival were lowering with each passing second. He could feel the pain in his muscle. His mind drastically trying to think of a plan but was drawing a blank. Right now he was praying that by some miracle in Dante's demonic powers would help him survive. Well, this is it he shut his eyes. And then he was slapped on the face and started to float right before becoming a red and green stain on the pavement. WTF was the only thought in his mind. He looked over to see the girl he was saving had saved him. She deactivated her quirk on him and the piece of rubble she was using and promptly started puking rainbows. Truly what the fuck indeed. Izuku tried to get up but was incredibly exhausted, so he could only crawl. See come on body, we saved the girl, now we got to get more than 6 points. He groaned as he was feeling the strain DT could put on his body. That's when he heard, alright time is up. Present Mike's declaration stunned the boy. His body was now starting to give out. Damn it, was the last thought Izuku had, before promptly passing out. The girl looking at him in shock of his sacrifice and farther back the boy wearing glasses from earlier staring in awe at the display Midoriya had shown him. Damn it, Izuku had faded into unconsciousness on the practical exam grounds. Devil Trigger was still a fairly fresh thing to his body, seeing as before 10 months ago his body barely contained any demonic energy but was now containing truckloads of it. It was only natural that he hadn't gotten used to the strain. The other examinees were looking over the boy, amazed at his show of power. Before the test, most of them thought he was a weak nerd, easily writing him off but now they could only murmur about him. Whoa, he has that much power. But then why was he so wimpy before? Another bystander replies, maybe he was just trying to throw us off. Or he could just be crazy. Ten meters away from our protagonist was the blue hair boy from before the practical exam began thinking to himself. They're all missing the point. He could only stare in amazement. He sacrificed everything to save the girl. He was well aware of the current time he had left, the risk of his safety, and his severe lack of points. Yet he didn't hesitate to save her. His face contorted to one of seriousness. Of course, I would have done the same if this wasn't a test. A realization suddenly came to the boy's head. Wait, a test. The examiners, they all saw his rescue, does that mean? He had made a conclusion. Okay everybody, good job. The voice of an elderly woman broke everyone from their thoughts. You all have great potential, here have some gummies. The woman began handing out candy to people near her, which most didn't know how to respond to. People started muttering because this woman was Cheo Shuzenji. In her younger days, she was and still is, known to Japan as Recovery Girl. She had a magnificent quirk that could heal severe wounds in an instant, at the cost of the recipient's stamina. Recovery Girl walked towards Midoriya and examined his state. She was relieved to find that the boy wasn't harmed, just physically exhausted. HHM, demonic fatigue, unusual to see someone so young, awaken their demon blood. She noticed a few of his hair strands changing from a dark shade of green to a snow-white color. He'll be up in a few minutes, but he'll have a headache. I wonder if he has anything to do with that boy's condition. Shio glanced over to the brown-haired girl, who seemed to be worrying about the boy she just saved minutes prior. Don't worry about Greeny here, he'll be fine, RG reassured her. The UA nurse then saw the young lady's twisted ankle. You, on the other hand, look like you need a kiss. Her lips then processed to stretch out and kiss the youth on the ankle, effectively healing her, but also making a lot of the examinees feel uncomfortable at the sight. About a week later, his hollow, lifeless eyes bored into his fish dinner. His hair had changed back to its normal green and black color, but his soul was empty. 
It had been a week since Izuku had taken the entrance exam, and he hadn't heard a word from Yue. So the natural assumption of any normal individual was that he had failed. I Izuku, honey, why are you just staring at your fish? Should I be worried? His mother, Inko Midoriya, asked in concern looking over at her son. She had snapped him from his thoughts of failure and depression. H huh, oh no, I'm fine. He began to shove his food into his mouth at a quick rate to prove he was fine. After he finished dinner, he went to his room to dwell more on how his clear failure. I know I aced the written exam, but that doesn't matter because six crappy points won't mean anything on the practical. He laid motionless on his bed staring blank. His coat sprawled on the bed as well. He was just about to fall into slumber when he heard intense knocking at his door. I see you KU. It was his mother. He opened the door to see her look of anxiety as she held a letter in her hand. It's here, it came. The letter from Yue. She handed her son the letter. And Izuku began to open the letter, anxiety also filling his chest. He ripped the envelope in half and a small disc fell out. I am here as a projection. The symbol of peace was relaying the message to Izuku. To say he was shocked was an understatement. This was the man he had and still admired as his idol. Sure, All Might wasn't the world's greatest devil hunter, but he had changed the profession to be more like superhero work. He was Japan's best. And number one, Hunter. The man that saved people with a fearless smile. So why was he here? As by some witchcraft, the projection responded, I will be teaching at UA High School this year, passing on my knowledge to a new generation of heroes. He begins to read a small note card. Ah, Izuku Midoriya. That was quite the performance you put up the day of the exam. Not only did you get a 100% on the written exam, but passed the practical exam with flying colors. All Might's bellowed. The fanboy was shocked. H how did I pass? I only got 6 points. Unless, Izuku's thoughts were cut off. In the practical exam you earned 6 demon points, not a very impressive feat by itself, but you did, however. Two screens behind All Might appeared, the top playing the moment he saved a blonde kid from a robot and earning a point, while the other showed him slashing the zero pointer. Earn 70 rescue points, landing you in this spot on UAS scoreboard. The projection then changed to the exam's rankings. The green devil couldn't believe his eyes. He had tied for first with Bakugo. He could hear vague screams of that bastard not too far away from his house and faint explosions. Izuku had to sweat drop at this, as he realized who and what that was. The projection flashed again, back to the symbol of peace. Congratulations young man, this is your demon hunting academia. With all that said and done the projection closed. Izuku was stunned. Was this a dream? No, it was real. This is the reality he was living. He didn't let Dante down. Everything he had done wasn't a waste. He heard some sniffing and turned to see his mother was crying tears of joy. Oh, Izuku, I'm so proud. Inko then crushes her son with a bear hug knocking the wind out of him. T thanks. Mom, but, I, I, can't, knock, knock and co let go of her son. Both of the Midorias were curious as to who was at the door. Neither of them was expecting anyone. They made their way out of Izuku's room and his mother opened the door. Standing there was none other than the red-clad demon hunter himself, holding three strawberry sundaes and two boxes of pizza. Hey kid heard you Dante didn't get to finish as both residents of the Midoriya household screamed, what? The boy muttering about why his mentor was here and the woman passing out from the fact this man was standing at her door. I see where you get it from now kid Dante chuckled at the sight. After Inko had recovered and Dante put down his things, some serious explaining went down. Why are you here? Izuku yelled while Inko was wide-eyed and stiff as a nail. Wait, I didn't send you a text saying that I was bringing victory pizza and Sundays. As Dante said this he began checking his phone only to realize that he forgot to press send on his text. Oh, he put simply then chuckled. Izuku, still having a panic attack. That's not what I mean. He continued. I thought you wanted to keep this thing a secret. His teacher could only blink. You mean for the past 10 months you didn't tell your mom I was teaching you to be a badass? Izuku then began to face plant as he hears this statement. T then why did you want me to make an excuse to meet you the first time we met up to train? Izuku was trying to find Dante's logic. Oh, simple. If you died then I wouldn't get arrested. His mentor shrugged at this. What do you mean, my baby could have died? Inko Midoriya was now the one to start freaking out. Her son trying to reassure her, don't worry mom, he's only joking right. You are joking. His mentor ignored the question completely but added his two cents to the problem. Well sure, he could have died, but look at him. He's fine. The two greenettes paled and screamed again. One brief explanation later. So, I'll let me get this straight. Inko began, my son met you 10 months ago, impressed you so much you decided to take him on as your successor, and you've been training him ever since. That about sums it up the snowy-haired hunter was biting into a slice of pizza, a red mark in the shape of a hand on the left side of his face. And you didn't tell me about any of this. Inko started shaking her son. Dante told me to make up an excuse. Izuku tried to save himself at the expense of his teacher, but Dante was not going to get slapped again. 
Kid I never said you had to keep lying kid. You only had to the first time because. The red clad swordsman stopped talking. Remembering that the rest of the explanation was the reason he got slapped in the first place. Dante cleared his throat. Anyway, the kid was stupid for lying to you but he has amazing potential. He's a true successor to my power. The red-coated hunter smirked. He was truly impressed with Izuku. Can you protect him? A silent question caught Dante and Izuku off guard a bit. Both their eyes widened slightly. I, I know how dangerous the life of a demon hunter can be. I know there will be blood. And Ko's eyes were shadowed. I was always secretly happy my son never got a quirk or shown potential for demonic ability. But now that he has that power he'll pursue his dreams, no matter what. Tears were rolling down the short woman's face. Please promise me you'll keep him alive. At this, Izuku also started shedding tears, touched at his mother's concern. The white-haired half-devil starred and stunned, gazing at the woman before him. He then had a genuine smile make its way across his face. Like mother, like son. Dante then got down off of the couch he was sitting on, got onto his knees and bowed. Lady, no, Mrs. Midoriya. I promised to you I'd give my life to keep your son alive. He then got up and took one of the boxes of pizza. So, we finally going to have some victory pizza and sundaes. A sudden realization came to Izuku. Hey Dante, how did you know I passed the entrance exam? I only just found out just now that I passed. Izuku's mentor blinked. And then he remembered. Oh yeah, I called a few favors from a friend in UA. He's the principal there and I got him to pull a few strings for me. That's why I didn't talk to you this week. It involved a lot of paperwork. Dante dragged out that last bit. Paperwork always sucks. This piqued his student's interest. What was the favor? Dante placed his hand at his hip. And his other hand had his thumb pointing at himself. You're talking to the new assistant teacher of the Demon Hunter course. Before either of the Midorias could start freaking out. Okay time to party. After celebrating both Izuku and Dante were standing outside of the house. Dante saying his goodbyes. Kid, you've come a long way. You've gained so much power, but that doesn't mean I'm done teaching you. The son of Sparta clapped his hand to his student's back. Yeah I know, you're gonna be teaching at UA Dante then lightly slapped the back of the green-haired demon's head. No, you idiot. I still gotta whip your ass into shape. You're still too soft. The mentor started to walk off. You still have a weekend to prep for UA. Meet me at our usual spot. Looks like you still need a few lessons of style. With that he teleported off in a blur of red. It was the next day. Around 8.30am at the beach the half-demons trained at. Since school was starting soon Dante was being more laid back with his training. Anyway, Izuku was walking up to the beach, his sword already withdrawn and his hand ready to draw his pistol, just in case his mentor jumped him like last time. Hey, kid. The greenette looked behind his mentor walking casually toward him. Our green devil readied himself for an attack. Though that you're taking this serious kid. Dante then drew his own sword and continued. There's still a little bit more wimp I gotta beat out of you. His stance looking like he was about to swing a baseball bat while charging some demonic energy into the weapon. Izuku could only smirk at his teacher's antics. That is if you can beat it out of me. Ha, huh, your taunts need work. Dante throw rebellion towards his student. One last minute training arc later. Izuku was entering the campus of Yue, musing about how his mother made sure he had several various items used to whip his nose. His attire consisted of a Yue uniform, but with some minor adjustments. He kept the blazer open and popped the collar button of his white shirt open. His tie was also slightly loose around his neck. Over the course of the weekend Dante finished up his students' individual training and he had taught Izuku not to taunt enemies clearly stronger than him. The young boy had also sent his gear and outfit design into a support company to create his hunter gear. His weapons, holster, and overcoat his mentor gave him were now currently with Yue with the rest of his hunter clothing. The green devil was now currently walking down a hallway of the school looking for his class, 1A. He had finally found the class but was surprised to see the abnormal length of the door frame. Ah, uh, must be for people with size quirks. His musing was cut short when he heard some faint shouting. Our protagonist started sweat dropping, as he could think of one person that would yell that much. The young hunter in training opened the door to see not only the savage blonde he was expecting but the annoying glasses guy from the exam as well. Well, fuck me right that was the main thought running through Izuku's head. He had overheard the student he didn't introduce himself as Tenyeida, from some private rich kid school or something. He also heard Bakugu threaten to crush that extra. Ida then noticed the greenette and essentially sprinted over to him. Hello, I am Tenya Ida from Izuku abruptly cut him off. Ooh, why yeah I heard you earlier. Izuku also noticed he was making hand gestures and arm movements, even though they didn't really seem to be contributing anything. You are Midoriya, correct? The taller teen asked. Yeah, how'd you know? Izuku raised a brow. I saw the final results of the practical exam. I assumed you'd tied for first, though you would be either Katsuki Bakugo or Izuku Midoriya, and just now I confirmed that he then over there was Bakugo and you also confirmed who you were. 
believe it or not, that all came out in one breath. Ada continued, Midoriya, I truly misjudged you at our first encounter, you were able to see the hidden proportion of the test. Please forgive me Ada began to bow. Guess he isn't so bad, just really stiff. The green devil then decided to reassure the blue-haired team that it was okay and that he didn't even know there was a secret point system. He was giving him too much credit. Messy green hair, freckles, plain face. You're the boy from the before. Izuku turned from Ada to the door. A vein popped at his forehead when he heard the last part of his description, but was then surprised to see the girl he had saved. I'm so glad you made it into UA. She greeted at him. Oh, you're the nice girl that stopped me from tripping. Glad to before he could finish his sentence a voice came from behind them. If you came here to socialize, get out. When they turned to the front of the class they didn't immediately see anyone until they looked down and saw what looked like a large caterpillar. The large caterpillar turned a bit revealing a tired unshaven face of an older man. He then said, Welcome to the UA Hero Course. As he began to get out of his sleeping bag, his attire consisted of a black long sleeve shirt and pants, with a grey scarf that wrapped around his neck a few times. His hair was long and unkempt. It took 8 seconds for all of you to be quiet. Time is valuable. Any rational student should know this. A set of green eyes narrowed at the man. Who is this guy? He's a teacher for UA but I don't recognize him as a hero. He looks like shit, to be honest. Izuku shook his thoughts away, as his teacher began to speak again. My name is Shouta Aizawa. Your homeroom teacher the teacher, now known as Aizawa, greeted them. He sounded tired, which made everyone wondering how he was a pro hunter. The probable insomniac bought out UA gym clothes, seemingly out of nowhere, and continued, All right, let's go. Put these on and head outside. Everyone was confused by the request, wondering if it had to do with the school's orientation. After a quick change, all of Class 1 was outside. We'll be having a physical capability test, the tired teacher said nonchalantly. This shocked the entire class. What about orientation Mr. Aizawa? The zero-gravity girl voiced the thoughts of most of the class. If you want to go pro, then it's illogical to waste time on pointless events. He stated, once again surprising most of the class. At UA we're not ones to stick to tradition. We have a unique teaching system that allows teachers to teach any way we see fit. You've all had physicals and examinations. But you've never gotten to see the current limits of your quirks and in some of your cases, demonic power. Back you go. You managed to tie for first place on the entrance exams. What was the farthest distance you could throw a softball in junior high? Around 67 meters, the ash blonde replied. Okay, try using your quirk to enhance the results. Anything goes just stay in the circle, Aizawa instructed his student. Said student plastered an animalistic grin as he took the softball and entered the circle. Die. The ball rocketed from Kastuki's hand as he sent it flying with an explosion. Most of the class looked in awe at his feat of strength. With the exception of a kid with white and red hair and Midoriya who was sweat dropping, die. He let out a low mutter. You all need to know what your current maximum is in terms of your limits. Finding them is the most rational way to figure out your potential. The class attention was brought back to their teacher as he held up a device. It read 705 meters. This got all of the class pumped up and ready to show their skill. All right, this is going to be manly. A spiky redhead practically shouted. Yeah, this looks like it's gonna be fun. A girl with pink skin and hair said. Too bad for the class. Fun just so happened to be Aizawa's trigger word. So this looks fun huh? The tired pro glared at his students. You all have three years to become official demon hunters. You think you have time for games? He grunted out something that sounded like idiots. Today you will complete eight physical tests. That will judge your potential. The person at the bottom of the leaderboard has none. This will be expelled immediately. A sadistic smirk found its way onto his face. Most of the class looked like they wanted to piss themselves. But that isn't fair. A student voiced out their opinion. This got a serious response out of their teacher. You think natural disasters are? How about power intoxicated demons or low lives that like to call themselves villains? No. This world is filled unfairness. Demon hunters are here to try and prevent these things. If you want to even consider going down this path you have to push yourself beyond plus ultra. Aizawa's small speech actually inspired them a bit, a first for all the students. A freckled-faced teenager began to process the information given to him. Immediate expulsion. I can't take this too lightly but it doesn't seem like I have much competition physically. Izuku was mainly looking at the pair of floating clothes and the grape kid. I have no clue how they got past the entrance exam. But if they got to this point I guess I shouldn't underestimate them. 
He had started muttering about the competition he could possibly see in his classmates, creeping a majority of them out. You see, due to the shift in his personality Izuku's random bouts of clustered words came off as a little more sinister, simply because he would start glaring slightly at who he was analyzing, as well give off unintentional killer intent. Training with Dante did no favors to his social image. Midoriya, our green hero was snapped from his thoughts by his teacher's voice. Everyone was staring at him with wide eyes, excluding Katsuki, and were sweating a little. You're creeping everybody out. Even he looked a bit unsettled. Izuku rubbed the back of his head sheepishly, as sorry. Aizawa was slightly impressed. He's already analyzing his threats and judging his competition. At least he isn't as completely idiotic as I thought. He was thinking back to his initial thoughts of the boy after witnessing him in the exam. He's still reckless though. The pro hunter then announced. All right, enough demonstrations and muttering. It's time for the real thing. Seven tests later. Class 1 were at the final test of the day, the ball throw. Most of the students did remarkably well in a variety of tests. But right now we only care about Midoriya's scores. For the 50-meter dash, he was second only to Ida. He had used Devil Trigger to fly across the line. This, in turn, got Bakugo aggravated and he tried to assault the Green Devil due to him showing his new demonic blood calling him a liar and a bastard, but was stopped by Aizawa. This led to Izuku figuring out he was the pro hunter who used the code name Eraserhead due to his quirk. After that little incident, the test resumed. A few students were muttering about Izuku's demon form and his amazing speed, but one was currently shocked to their core. What did you go through to also receive that form? Our emerald hunter in training used devil trigger for most of the other tests and placed at least top 5 for most, but he was expending a little too much energy in this form. He was now up for the ball test, after the girl who scored an infinity. That would be hard to follow up. Okay, I can hold Devil Trigger for a few more minutes. I can pour the rest of my demonic energy into this last test with that last thought he throws the ball. Only for Devil Trigger to deactivate and the ball only traveled 57 meters. I could have sworn I had more time. Izuku then turned to see the teacher that had walked toward him. I erased your demon power. And your quirk if you had one. You thought you could overexert yourself again didn't you? He was glaring at his student. You embody plus ultra, sure. But on the field, if you go over your limits you're a useless burden to those around you. Being reckless and prone to showing off isn't a good combination. Izuku swallowed hard at that, sweating a little. These tests are here to help find your limit, not your breaking point. Aizawa stopped using his quirk, rubbing his eyes a little. I'm giving you a second chance. If you pass out again or don't try at all I'm expelling you instead of the last place. With that the baggy-eyed teacher returned to his spot. Let's see how he reacts to the unexpected, Aizawa thought. The freckled teen had a lot on his mind. I can't use Devil Trigger or I'll push myself too far at this point, but I can't just throw the ball like normal. He began to think back to his training. Then suddenly an idea came to his head. I can charge some energy into my arm and increase the strength of my muscles. He started his pitch, light green and red static surging around his arm. The ball flew from his fingers and he was still standing. Aizawa was smirking like a madman as he read the device read 550 meters, that damn kid. From the corner of a nearby by building, a red-coated demon hunter could be seen leaning against it. Knew I didn't have to worry about you, kid. He then pushed off the wall and started walking away. This calls for a victory strawberry sundae. That damn kid was the main thought on Eraserhead's mind. This kid, he had witnessed from the entrance exams was nothing he expected him to be. The boy's initial impression came off as punkish, reckless, and overall a showboat. He had seen the kid toying a bit with the zero-pointer before ending its mechanical life. But he was actually a decent example of what a first-year student should be like. Izuku was always calm and collected, perhaps a bit lazy at first glance. His attire would make you believe he was some form of delinquent, but he wasn't. He was actually fairly socially awkward. He was able to analyze and theorize which students could be stronger than him in certain aspects and how to go about taking the tests. Hell, the kid even adapted when he was forced to change his all-or-nothing strategy. All in all, the kid had potential. At this point, Aizawa realized he was still smiling and quickly went back to his regular frown. Okay, now that Midoriya went, it's time to review the score. This device will add up your individual scores and place them in order from most potential to least. I'm just going to display all the scores at once because it's easier. The pro then released the scores. First, Momo Yeirazu. Second, Shouto Todoroki third, Katsuki Bakugo fourth, Izuku Midoriya fifth, Fumikage Takoyami sixth, Ida Tenya seventh, Mizo Shoji eighth, Rikido Sato 9th, Tsuyuasui 10th, Achako Yuraka 11th, Hantasiro 12th, Mashirao Ajiro 13th, Ajiro Kirishima 14th, Mina Ashido 15th, Yuga Ayama 16th, Denki Kaminari 17th, Kyoka Jiro 18th, Koji Koda 19th, Minoru Minda 20th, Toru Hagakir Side Note, this list was based on my own reasoning on who is strongest, most capable in 1A. 
As much as I hate to admit this, I feel like Minda isn't the most physically incapable of Wane. The fucker has shown time and time again he isn't as bad as we thought, at least in terms of capability. I'll defend my reasoning later. Izuku was slightly upset he had only made top 5, but hey he wasn't at the bottom of the barrel. Speaking of which, the floating school uniform was presumably on her knees. Crying, maybe, he was too far away to tell. Man, that must suck. Glad I didn't place 20th. I mean it would be just plain sad. If after all the training I went through I'd get last. In another universe, a green-haired and eyed hero in training sneezed. Oh, and by the way, I was lying about the expulsion. It was a logical ruse to get you all to try your best. Those were Aizawa's words. Five seconds after he uttered them, four-fifths of the class turned white and fell to the ground. The remaining five students' reactions varied. Katsuki didn't give a fuck about the fate of the extras, Shouto was indifferent, Momo was also unfazed, saying that she saw through that at the start and apologized for not telling the rest of the class for not telling them sooner. Takoyami was just staring at his teacher sweat dropping, and one main thought went through Izuku's head. What a dick move. Anyway, you all did decently. Get changed and head back to class, there's a syllabus you all have to get signed. With a sigh of relief, the official class wanna started to head to the locker rooms. Aizawa stood there for a moment, looking back on the scores. Now I know who to crack the whip on. He was looking at everyone below top 10. A voice then broke him from his thoughts. Logical ruse, heh. Thought April Fools was last week's shouta. Nothing stopped you from kicking out an entire class last year. Looking behind him, the gloomy homeroom teacher was unfazed by seeing a certain white-haired man. Eating a sundae. I guess Midoriya impressed you too. Well, maybe not just him, Grapehead was a surprise. Dante smirked at his fellow hunter while taking another bite of his delicious treat. Isn't it too early to be picking favorites? And don't you have anything better to do with your time instead of stalking kids? Shout a shot back. The son of Sparta had to laugh a little at that. When it comes to my successor, I think I have the rights to check in on him. I gotta ask, why'd you pick on him of all people? Aizawa's eyes widened momentarily, but then they went back to normal. So, that's why he's such wild card. He was literally trained by the most reckless man-child in the world, and to answer your question he was arrogant during the exam. We have enough professionals that have egos bigger than the moon. I was making sure he wasn't always like that, and that he could follow through an assignment given him. Dante stopped smiling at his description the insomniac gave him and just sighed. Still a hard ass as always, huh Shouta? Instead of answering the question directly, the man in black just responded with, Thanks for adding to the list of people I have to improve. He began to walk off. Dante's sweat dropped. Shit, I might have made your high school life a little more shitty kid. A bit later. Hey, Midori you're right. You were so freaking manly today out on the field. The redhead known as Kirishima introduced himself as they were changing. Yeah man, you were pretty cool in top 5 of the class, that's just awesome. The kid with the elbow tape quirk, Siro, gave him a compliment. It was the rare moments like these where Izuku reverted back to his insecure wimpy nature and a stuttering mess. Th thanks, he wasn't familiar to the compliments from his peers. All the other boys in the room thought along the lines of, what a 180, said freckled teen quickly got changed and started to relax a bit. He did enjoy the praise from his classmates. As he exited his fellow men could only stare. Man, he's weird. For a complete badass he's pretty shy, said the blonde boy, with a black-shaped lightning bolt in his hair. Yeah, you'd think he'd love the attention. With his laid-back, cool dude look and all, Ciro agreed. After the students finished changing they headed back to their homeroom. The first day at UA was a half day so it wouldn't be long until school was over. Each student grabbed a syllabus and started reading their stuff, then a voice came from the door frame. It was their teacher. Congratulations on making it into UA before you leave today I want to go over a few things for tomorrow. It's your first full day of school. With that said and done, the school bell rang signaling the end of the day. Have a good day, and be ready for tomorrow. Aizawa then proceeded to head to his desk, most likely to do paperwork. Izuku sighed, he started to walk off. A pretty eventful first day, but I made it. As long as the teachers at UA aren't as crazy as Dante then I shouldn't have too bad of a time. He sighed. Izuku walked out of the class on his way to the train station. I wonder if Dante would be down for some pizza. He had made his way outside of the campus and was heading towards his train station when he was confronted by Ida. Midoriya, you did quite well during Mr. Aizawa's test today. You are truly a student worthy of becoming a demon hunter. You weren't bad yourself, Ida, you placed 6th, top 10 is no joke. Indeed, that is a remarkable accomplishment. But thinking about the circumstances that occurred during the test leaves a bitter taste in my mouth. It does not seem fit to trick your students on the first day of class, especially with the threat of expulsion. But this UA... At this point, the blue-haired boy was going on a full-on rant about how Yua had unorthodox methods, and how amazing they were for unlocking the untapped potential. 
Of course, it was accompanied by hand gestures. So it was also at this point Izuku started to space out at the other teen's long-winded speech. Hey wait up. A feminine voice cut off their conversation. Both boys turned to see the brown-haired girl from their class. The girl who got infinity on the ball throw. You're the infinity girl, right? Ada motioned toward the girl. Yeah, I'm Achako Yuraka. You're Ida Tenya and Deku Midoriya, right? A throbbing vein appeared on Izuku's forehead. Yet he kept a calm demeanor. No, my first name is Izuku. Oh oh, my bad. I just thought that was your name. I only heard that Bakugo guy call you Deku and only heard Mr. Aizawa call you by your last name. She paused for a moment. Why does he call you Deku? Oh, well it's a nickname he gave me when we were younger. It's an alternate meaning to the kanji that make up my name, useless. So it's a demeaning insult. That is very rude. Well, I like it. Hiroraka beamed. Both males of the party gaped at that statement, causing the girl to panic in the realization that her words seemed insulting. Wait, I don't mean it in a bad way. Deku just sounds like a word that means you can do it or I'll never give up. That's why I'd like to call you Deku. Achako was a little flustered, her natural blush spreading a bit on her face. Well if you mean it in that way, I'm fine with you calling me Deku. Izuku gave her a smile and a shrug, but on the inside, he was freaking out. A girl just gave me a pet name. Does that mean something or is that normal between friends of the opposite gender? Ada couldn't understand what changed Izuku's mind. Didn't you just say that it was an insult? He had to sweat drop at that. D don't worry about it. The green-haired teen stuttered and started walking towards his destination. To his slight dismay the two were still walking with him. The three became fast friends and as they headed to the station. The next day, when you think of a school for demon hunters, you tend to forget that there are regular classes mixed into the equation. President Mike as an English teacher was pretty interesting. His lectures were still boring to most but you can't deny his enthusiasm though. Our protagonist thought to himself. To be honest the morning classes were a breeze for Izuku. He was very gifted academically and could grasp all of the material immediately. So after jotting down notes and answering a few questions he sort of ended up trying to keep himself from sleeping. At least in President Mike's class, he was capable enough to stay awake due to the shouting. Nin came by fast and it was already lunch, which was hella cheap. It was cooked by a pro that used the nickname Lunch Rush. He was a god in the kitchen. Anyway, after lunch in the afternoon is the real part of the day. The demon hunting course with All Might, and now Dante. I have. We could all hear the number one pro in Japan's booming voice come through the door like a normal person. Ironically his entrance was anything but that. He was gripping both parts of the frame with his hands as he leaned into the class. He was wearing his Silver Age gear, which was, in all honesty, a superhero suit. This man really did turn demon hunting into a professional form of being a superhero. He did a mild jog into the room. A lot of people started commenting about how cool he was. Izuku was not an exception. His eyes sparkled as he readied a pen and notebook for an autograph. That was until his mentor for the past year crashed through the window, sending shards of glass flying onto the ground. Dante quickly did a somersault as he hit the ground and pushed himself towards the desk, landed on it and struck the paint me like one of your French girl's pose. Good afternoon class, he greeted. Everyone had to sweat at the red coat demon hunter, even All Might. See can he just do that? After the initial entrance though, most people started to give comments. Whoa, is that the Dante? He's a teacher and he broke through a window. So cool. MHM, anyway. The buff blonde man cleared his throat. Today we start hunter basic training begins. We will mainly be focusing on battle training. Dante shifted from the desk, pulled out a remote and pressed a button. Four panels on the wall popped out. You'll be needing these, because. Then Dante cut in, if you're gonna save the world, might as well look good doing it. Finishing his colleague's sentence. All of the class got excited by this. Everyone got up and started to search for their respective cases. Izuku's case was number 20. After the students of class 1 got their gear they set out to the locker rooms to change. When you kids are done changing meet us at training ground gamma. 5 to 10 minutes later. After they got changed Dante had to admit. His new students were looking quite stylish. Most students nowadays had gone for the superhero look. Mostly because of how popular it had gotten in Japan and it came with more versatile gear. Most were in tights, spandex, and a diaper. But what really got him was the style his student chose. He almost did a double take as he saw his favorite student walk in. He was definitely trying to imitate Dante's earlier style, though most wouldn't know since he hadn't used that look since he was a teenager. Izuku was shirtless, wearing only his black coat from Dante, and the holster for his guns and sword covering his torso. It showed off his abs and his pecs, causing a few of his female classmates to begin drooling or blushing at the sight. The holster chest strap actually kinda looked like a bra, one of the reasons Dante originally abandoned the look. He wore dark green, almost black. Leather pants with his signature red shoes. His weapons were proudly strapped to his back. Izuku had walked in, admiring not just his idol, but some of his peers' costumes as well. 
He saw a few kids who chose more civilian-like clothes. Most looked like Comic-Con cosplayers with only one other kid looked like he was decked out in a hunter's outfit. The guy with the red and white hair. He was the last one to walk into the crowd of students, so he jogged right up to the group. Hey Deku. Izuku turned to see Achako. You outfit and gear looks really cool. I wish I was more specific when it came to mine though, it's a little tight. She started rubbing the back of her head. Izuku didn't really get most of what she said due to his brain frying upon seeing her costume. It resembled an astronaut costume that was primarily a faded pink and black. But that wasn't what caught our protagonist's attention. It was the fact that it hugged her figure like it was a second skin. It outlined her curves and made her aim assets more noticeable than when they were in the school's uniform. Izuku could feel the heat rapidly increase in his face. Okay okay, calm down, calm down. The green-haired demon hunter in training was repeating this mantra and trying to look away until he could talk to his female friend properly. But that completely failed when he noticed another girl. Momo the top student, she was in a completely revealing outfit that showed off her legs and cleavage. With a nosebleed at breakneck speeds, Izuku promptly fell over and almost fainted. Meanwhile the kid with the grapes and diaper gave him a thumbs up and told him that the hunter course is the best. Dante who was staring at the scene the entire time, started laughing his ass off. I have no regrets going into teaching. We all hear. All Might's booming voice got everyone's attention. All right, it's time for battle training. The lesson had officially begun and Ada was the first one to question what was going on. Sir, this looks like the same field used on the entrance exams. Is it safe to assume that we will once again be performing city-scale maneuvers? Actually kid, we're kicking it up a notch. The worldwide number one chimed in. Indeed young Tenya, today we will be doing indoor matches. The blonde hunter beamed. Most hunters work out on the streets fighting small hordes of demons. But with the steady rise of criminal activity over the years and aided with quirks and demonic power, most criminals have become borderline supervillains. The most cunning and heinous are definitely more likely to appear indoors. For the most part, we will be doing 2-1-2 sparring matches with select objectives for the team you're on. Any questions? What exactly determines victory? Is this like Mr. Aizawa's test? Will we get expelled? Can I just blow people up? Is my cape fabulous? Should we start it dividing into groups now? H hold up, one at a time, my quirk isn't super hearing. In order, I will explain rules in a bit. No one will be expelled, no, I've seen better, and I will get to that as well. The ridiculously muscular man then pulled out a small sheet of paper. Izuku lost a little respect when he saw his hero using a cheat sheet. There will be two teams, Hunter and Demons. The Hunter's objective is to take down the Demons or close the Hellgate and the Demons' objective is to guard the Hellgate so you can release the forces of Hell before time runs out. We will be deciding teams by drawing lots. And before you shout glasses, yes drawing lots is an efficient way to decide teams. Dante had cut off Ida before he could question the method. The red-coated man then proceeded to take out his own small sheet of paper. You won't always be able to work with people you know. In the heat of battle, it could be anyone that's got your back. With that said he tossed the small paper away getting the basics of his students were supposed to learn. I see, I apologize Mr. Dante. The teen in the night armor gave a small bow. Now it is time to make the teams. All Might began making the groups. The teams consisted of Team A, Midoriya and Yuraka Team B, Todoroki and Shoji Team C, Yayarazu and Ashido. Team D, Bakugo and Jiro Team E, Tenya and Ayama Team F, Sato and Kota Team G, Minoru and Kaminari Team H, Takoyami and Asui Team I, Ajiro and Hagakure Team J, Siro and Kirishima H. What are the odds? Izuku thought to himself seeing that he and Achako were a one a team. The girl's response to the team up was positive, awesome, must be fate. Let's do this the greenette smirked at his partner. She's freaking adorable shaking the thought from his head he turned to see Dante drawing pieces of paper from a box. Alright, the first match will be between. He casually gazed at the paper in hand. Hunter Tima and Demon Team D he grinned at his successor. Time to show your punk friend how badass you've become. I don't care if that was intentional or not Dante, but I'm going to have to kill you for this. Izuku could feel a pair of eyes practically burning their way through his head. Dante handed both teams a set of earbuds. Those are for you in case you decide to split up. Would both teams get into starting positions? Izuku and Achako started to walk off to the entrance of the building while he saw Katsuki and his partner walk to the back entrance. The rest of the class went into a separate screening room. Izuku brought a hand to his chin. So, it's me and Achako, versus Kaken and the earlobe girl, Gyro I think. I don't know much about her. She most likely has a sound quirk due to the jacks and the earsome abishekanusa thentalo catap help you with it abin said hirinkak chanship izuku began using his time to form a plan. But his menacing mumble made Yuraka feel uneasy. Um, Deku you're kinda scaring me. She gave him a worried. The greenette was snapped from his musing. HM, oh sorry Achako. I was just trying to analyze the situation and I have a decent plan what's your plan? Well, it's pretty simple. 
I'm 100% certain Kakin will come looking for a fight as soon as possible, so it won't be too long before we run into him. When that happens I want you to break away from the fight and find the portal. I don't know much about Jaira but try to take her down if you can or close the portal. I'll try to assist you if I can finish off Kakin or break away from the fight. Okay Deku, I'll do my best your Raka fist pumped. Battle, start. Dante voice was heard on the intercom. With Team D. Battle, start. D team was currently in a white room with a small black circle with some runes inscribed around several layers. All the runes were glowing a menacing red. In the middle of the circle was a faux katana, acting as a pseudo-medium to keep the portal open. Can't believe that useless bastard lied to me about being a worthless nobody. He thinks he's all high and mighty. I'll have to crush him and put him back in his place. Akugo was quietly formulating a plan and cursing out his middle school victim. Earlobes, guard the gate. I'll destroy Deku and round face. Hey, we're supposed to be a team. What if they beat you? Jairo glared at her partner, already hating his attitude. Not gonna happen earlobes, just stay out of my way and guard the gate. The explosive boy then decided to leave the room, looking for his prey. HMPH, what crawled up his ass and died. With that said Jairo plugged on of her ear jacks into the wall trying to see if she could get a read of the opposing team's location. They had just entered and were heading towards the staircase. Bakugo would intercept them soon. That idiot better know what he's doing. With Team A, Tima was currently walking down the corridor of the building. Izuku was tense and Achako was also looking uneasy. Both were waiting for an attack by Katsuki. Kaken could be around any corner. I'll have to give Achako the possibility to escape. But then it's out of my hands when she encounters Gyro to close the fake hell G his thoughts were interrupted. Dia K U. You bastard. Boom. Izuku barely had any time to react before grabbing his partner and rolling her to safety while taking a bulk of the hit. His right coat sleeve was entirely burned off in the process, leaving his arm with third-degree burns. He grunted in pain. I knew he'd come straight for a fight but I still let him get the drop on me. Are you okay? Hiroraka yelled, asked her teammate, seeing the current damage done to his arm. Yeah, I just got a little charred. Izuku's arm was beginning to heal slowly. Damn, here I thought I could take both you extras out in one shot. Both victims of the attack turned back to see Bakugu growling at them as he started his menacing walk towards them. Achako, go, find the gate. I'll try to keep him at bay. With a determined nod, the gravity manipulator left the scene to look for her objective. Izuku turned back to his opponent, some fear sweat dripping from his brow. He took a breath and calmed himself down. A cocky smirk made its way to the greenette's face. Heh, you sure know how to cause a commotion. The villain act is fitting to your crappy personality. On the outside, it looked as if Izuku had nerves of steel, but on the inside, his old instincts were telling him to start running. His body looked extremely tense. You talk big for a worthless pebble. You might think you're a big shot Deku, but I can tell you're still as useless and spineless as ever. Bakugo snarled as he jumped at Izuku with a right hook aimed for his opponent's face. The successor to Dante did a quick sidestep and grabbed his enemy's arm. Using the momentum from the attack he also spun and threw Bakugo to the ground. Izuku jumped back from his opponent so he could let him recover a bit. You constantly lead with your right kaken. Ever since the age, you got your quirk. You've always been so predictable. The green-haired boy's demeanor was much more relaxed as he gave a cocky grin. Bakugo was furious. He quickly got up and got in a brawling stance. Stop looking down on me you fucking Deku. The ash blonde then launched himself at the freckled boy. Izuku had drawn out his sword to block the incoming attack. In the screening room. On one of the many screens, the entire class witnessed Midoriya's sick throw. Dang, did you see that counter? That was so cool. Kaminari stared at the screen in awe. Yeah, but Bakugou's sneak attack was super unmanly, Kirishima complained. Hey redhead, the low blow might suck to deal with but anything goes in a fight, Dante gave his student a semi-stern look. That is correct. Young Kirishima, you can't always expect your opponent to play by the rules. Especially demons. Young Bakugo is playing his part as the villain very well. All Might continued his colleague's point. Kirishima scratched the back of his head. Yeah, but it's still unmanly. He mumbled out. The rest of the class was watching the current events playing out. It seemed that Midoriya had given Bakugu some breathing room and was currently talking to him. Whatever he just said must have been a taunt because Bakugu got back up with gusto, rage painted over his face. Was it really wise for Midoriya to give recovery time and aggravate Bakugo like that? Yeyarazu continued. Surely he must know that's a self-destructive method. The wealthy girl's opinion of her black-coated peer dropped a bit. To think one would have that much arrogance. Clearly, her interactions with the other boy on screen were very limited. Ha, it's not when you got the skill to back up your claims. Izuku's got this in the bag, Dante stated, getting a curious look from everyone present in the room. Excuse me, Mr. Dante. How come you're so confident in Midoriya? Ribbit, Asui asked. Because I personally trained him. The teaching assistant nonchalantly replied. 
Everyone's, excluding All Might, eyes bulged and mouths gaped. Shit, did I say that out loud? Well, you kids better keep that a secret. He simply returned to a screen as if what he just said wasn't mind-blowing. What? The class bellowed. Even All Might had to sweat at the white-haired man's actions. It's ridiculous how calm he is about this. So, that's why you're so confident in Midoriya. Personal bias. This response came from Momo. Eh, not really. I just know for a fact that the kid can hold his own. He can last at the very most 10 minutes against me. So he could kick a lot of your collective asses if you're not careful. Most of those who were listening were stunned. The news that one of their classmates had the power to hold his own against the best demon hunter in the world was a lot to swallow. While most were in awe, some were skeptical. Overall most were eager to see what Midoriya could do. Turning our attention back to the screens, on one of the monitors was displayed the recent interaction between Gyro and Uraraka. They had started combat, and within the short amount of time Gyro had released a few sonic blasts from the amps in her boots and had knocked down a pillar which Uraraka used to her advantage. She had started using the large slab of concrete as a baseball bat. At the moment, the two were at a stalemate. As amusing as that was let's get back to the real reason you're all reading this chapter. Izuku vs Katsuki A flurry of attacks was coming from the explosive teen as Katsuki relentlessly went after Izuku. Izuku had managed to take minimal damage from the onslaught and anything serious was already starting to heal. During his dodges, he pulled out Ricochet and Bolt to release his own ranged attacks at a lower power to avoid serious damage. Both combats were fairly wounded in that little time though. Bakugo lunged at Izuku punching him in the gut. Izuku bearing with the pain withdrew insurgents and coated it in demonic energy to dull the blade. He then slashed down causing a medium-sized gash on Bakugo's shoulder. He yelled at the intense pain he just received. Just die already. Katsuki released another powerful explosion. Izuku rolled out of the way and pulled out his sword and performed a drive attack then followed up with a stinger. Bakugo managed to tank the energy attack. Only a few more cuts and bruises added to the collection and blocked he had the sword with his gauntlet. That all you got Kakin, this is almost boring. The green-haired teen gave off a fake yawn. Bakugo in a fit of rage pushed the other boy off and a murderous grin was plastered on his face. I'll show you my best you fucking useless piece of shit. He brought up his arm and placed his other hand near the pin of his gauntlet. These aren't just for show, they got purpose too. They collect my sweat so I can have one big bang. Perfect for wiping scum off the face of the earth. Young Bakugo, don't pull that pin. The results could be disastrous and you could kill young Midoriya. Katsuki could hear All Might's voice in his earpiece. It'll be fine if he dodges. The rage-driven boy replied, pulling the pin ignoring his teacher's words. Achako vs Kayoka Achako was having a hard time getting past Gyro's attacks. She didn't have many openings to work with. She had started using other bits of debris as baseballs and was batting them at Gyro, but she was dodging them fairly well. Only being grazed at best and the stone pillar she was working with as a weapon couldn't take to much more abuse. Think Achako, what can I do from here? The two combatants heard a large boom and the building began to shake a bit. It knocked both of the girls over and in response, both of them used their earpieces to hear from their partners about what just happened. Back to the main battle seconds prior, Izuku had no time to dodge the large-scale attack and brought up his arms to try to shield himself from the attack. The explosion took out one of the walls and the area that was hit was covered in immense smoke. Breathing heavily Katsuki let his smirk grow as he thought Deku was finished. But once the smoke was cleared it revealed Izuku and Devil Trigger, breathing just as heavy and his reptilian skin was severely scorched. It was healing but it still hurt. Deku, are you okay? Whatever just happened shook the building. Izuku could hear Achako, but could only grunt back. Yeah, fine, focus on your task. With that he shut off his earpiece. He could see Katsuki say something back to his earpiece. Idiot, what did you do? Jairo was yelling at the earpiece. You caused the whole building to shake. Shut up. I know what I'm doing Katsuki was beginning to woozy from blood loss. Hey, Blondie. Another stunt like that again and you're expelled got that. Dante's angry voice shouted into his ear. Yeah, whatever. Bakugo spat back turning his calm off. As time stood still, both of the two boys just stared at each other, breathing heavily. They both knew there wasn't much else they could do, so they both started moving towards their destination, picking up speed until they were both sprinting the demon hunters and training raised their right fist. They ch 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 D-D-D-I-I-I-E. Bam. Both fists hit their destination, right in their faces. Izuku's devil trigger faded his head full of white hair instead of its usual dark green. But it was slowly fading back to its original color. The pair of combatants stood. Only the whites of their eyes could be seen. Without missing a beat they both started to fall backward. Their match ending in a draw. Back with the girls. Achako was still worried about her partner's well-being got back up. A stone pillar in hand. Gyro had also gotten back up in a readied stance, but before any of the two could do anything they both heard, both Midoriya and Bakugo are unable to battle. 
This actually shocked both of them, the fact that they code each other. Recovering from the shock Achako quickly devised a plan. She tapped five pieces of debris and avoided the sound blasts the ear jack girl was sending her way. After obtaining the pieces she then batted them towards the opposing girl and proceeded to throw the pillar as well. Gyro's eyes widened at the onslaught and released a large sonic attack to destroy the incoming projectiles. The attack did manage to break up the pillar, but it also created a small dust cloud and a few pebbles started pelting her. The purple-haired girl blew the dust away and saw Achako was nowhere in sight. Hunter team wins. Surprised at the statement the punk rock girl looked back to see that Yuraka had pulled out the sword deactivating the fake Hellgate. You see, the gravity girl had floated above her opponent while she was within the dust cloud successfully getting past her. Achako was very proud at her win. And Gyro just sighed but didn't take the loss to bad. Ladies, please report back to the screening room for performance evaluation. Dante's voice instructed them. With that said both surviving members of Teams and D walked down to join the rest of the class, ready for their grade. The ladies of both Teams and D were walking back to the screening room to receive their grades from their teachers. Their partners to the battle trial had both been taken out of commission due to a double knockout. They entered the room and were greeted by the red-coated teacher. Welcome back ladies, congrats on not dying. The rest of the class greeted them with much more enthusiasm. That was totally awesome. That was indeed an excellent strategy you used, your Raka. Using that rubble as a ranged attack was so manly. You did awesome to Gyro. Yeah, you had Uraraka for a while. MHM. All Might cleared his voice. Yes, both young Gyro and Uraraka have done well in this match. But can anyone tell me who the overall MVP of the match was? Momo Yeyarazu's hand shot up as soon as he fired the question. The muscular blonde huntsman didn't expect someone to have an answer. Or at least not that quickly. Sir, the MVP of the match was Uraraka. Akugo and Gyro did not cooperate as a team. In fact, Bakugo immediately ditched his teammate as soon as he heard start. Jairo did manage to hold her own but did nothing to convince Bakugo to work with her. Izuku did appear to form a plan with Uraraka, but ultimately got caught up with his fight with Bakugo and recklessly taunted his adversary. Uraraka however stuck to the plan, used a creative method to win the training exercise and was professional during the execution. To say the enter room was impressed was an understatement. Everyone was slack-jawed in awe at Momo's analysis of the combatants. Even Dante and All Might were sweating from how good her speech was. I can't even add anything else to that. It was a perfect judgment of everybody's roles in the fight. What is this chick? A supercomputer. She came to that conclusion in like 5 seconds. W well, yes that is correct. But young Uraraka could have executed that plan earlier to save her teammate from the knockout by ending the exercise sooner. All Might scraped up an extra reason, in order make himself look like a competent teacher. Yeah, what they said, Dante didn't even bother to try and hide the fact he had nothing to add. Anyway, the next two teams are B and G get your asses into gear. With that said, the students soon got on to the rest of their class. Later on at the school infirmary, it was near the end of the day. Izuku Midoriya was laying in the infirmary bed beginning to stir. His eyes cracked open with a groan. It had felt like he had gone through an intense workout. His muscles ached and his joints cracked as he pushed himself up. He rubbed his eyes and let out a yawn. Oh man, what happened? Everything hurts. Remembering his fight with Katsuki he came to the realization of how he had gotten here. Both he and his childhood friend were roughed up pretty bad. Glad to see you're awake, kid. Dante was sitting on a chair a few feet away from the bed. He began to stand up and walked over to Izuku, and then slapped him in the back of the head. Oh, what was that for? Izuku exclaimed clutching the back of his head. For being a dumbass, Izuku didn't have much time to say anything or even react before he got pummeled again. He was punched off of the bed, a lump on his noggin and sprawled on the floor. W.Y. He groaned. You didn't take the fight seriously. You taunted too much and gave you took too much unnecessary damage. I told you. Only taunt if you know for a fact you can beat someone without wasting too much energy. Most importantly you're not trying to be your own person. You're mimicking my combat style, not incorporating it. The red-coated assistant teacher had a stern look on his face. I don't understand. You're mad that I used everything you taught me. The green-haired boy rubbed the back of his head with an angry expression. No, I'm pissed that you stopped being yourself in that fight. Izuku was surprised by his mentor's response. He had stopped being himself. The nerdy hero lover that had no chance of achieving his dreams. What would that have to do with he was cut off from his line thinking? Kid, just because I taught you to have more confidence in yourself, that doesn't mean you just erase who you were. You're not one to go in guns blazing without a plan. Unless someone needs saving of course. Dante smiled a little but continued on with his advice, praise. But it seems lately you've forgotten your roots. When we first started out physical training, 
You would analyze and dodge in the first few seconds to know what to do against your opponent. In your fight with Bakugo, you just dived right in, took no time to think about what you were gonna do against him and if it wasn't for Devil Trigger you would have died from that blast. The boy didn't meet the man's gaze. All those things he had said were true. How could he even begin to come up with a response to that? He kept his head down, looking at the floor with a feeling of shame. Izuku, just because you're my successor, it doesn't mean that you have to be exactly like me. You're still able to be your own person kid. I only gave you some tools and knowledge to help you get you started on the path to your future. With that said, Dante began to leave the room. When he got to the door frame, he looked back. Also, try not to make me worry so much kid. I don't like the thought of losing someone close to me. The green half-devil just sat on the floor, thinking to himself. I need to stop being so useless, but Dante's right. I can't just completely get rid of my past style of living. I need to be someone worth being his successor. Now, I'm motivated. He got changed into his school uniform and grabbed his stuff as he started to head home. The next day, things had been quite hectic at the gates of you of the media had been crowded around the place, most likely due to that fact that not only All Might was a teacher there but Dante as well. Juicy gossip like that would surely draw hordes of them in, like moths to a flame. As students were entering the campus, they were swarmed by the press. They were asked questions like what was it like learning under All Might? Why was the world's greatest hero teaching here? And are you that kid that got attacked by that slime demon a year ago? That last one might have gotten a violent reaction, to say the least. Izuku had managed to skip out on the interview by simply lying that he was part of the general education course, promptly getting most of the reporters to find some other student to question. Eventually, Aizawa showed up threatened to call the police and close the gates to the school. The reporters stood outside the door for a few moments before starting to disperse, distraught by the fact that they couldn't get any words from the ones they sought out. But in the distance, a man with a brown cloak was standing in a nearby ally way. Inside the corridors of the school, Izuku had finally made it to the door of his homeroom. Glad I managed to trick the press. I did not feel like playing a game of 20 questions today. Little did the boy know how badly he had jinxed himself. As soon as the aspiring hero had opened the door any and all conversations of the classroom stopped. He just stood at the door frame as his peers gazed at him for what felt like an eternity. What had he done to get this much unwanted attention? He was starting to sweat a little from the sheer silence. Ooh, hi. He was almost trampled by 17 students. That came at him with the velocity of a bullet train. Dude, you were so manly yesterday. Those moves you pulled were sick. You got training from the greatest demon killer in history. School's barely started and you've already left us in the dust. You shined brilliantly with your performance yesterday. But do not think you can outshine moi. Midoriya, I must know how you managed to get recognition from someone as esteemed as Mr. Dante. I was so worried about you Deku. Mr. Dante wouldn't let anyone visit you yesterday because he said he had to give you advice. At your Uraka statement, Izuku inwardly winced. The man's words were still rather fresh in his mind and he also hated the fact that he made both his mentor and closest friend worry. He was also slightly relieved at the fact that Shoto and Bakugo didn't assault him with question. The latter of the two mildly glaring at him, while the other held some interest but overall still seemed indifferent to the current situation. He had received similar praise and questions from his peers. He wasn't able to answer any of them because a racer had walked in. Get in your seats within the next five seconds or you're all getting assigned an essay on why you should not be wasting time. Needless to say, all students moved at breakneck speeds to get to their desks. Aizawa looked at his timer. Five. Two seconds. We'll need to shave those extra few milliseconds off. He started to walk toward his desk. First, I must say you all did well for your first session in the hero course, but two of you could have done better. Midoriya, act more in battle. I told you before that you should know your limits. Other than that, you showed great skill when facing an opponent. Back Hugo, your combat capabilities are great. Don't act like a brat just because you lost. This earned a nod of understanding and a grunt from the respective students. Well today class, we have a very important matter to discuss. One that will decide and change for the rest of your life. This sent the class into a state of panic. What could possibly be so important that it could change their fates? You'll need to choose a class representative and vice rep. It's just normal school stuff. The class thought in unison. I don't care how it gets done. Just make sure it gets done by the end of my nap. The insomniac climbed into his sleeping bag and rolled his way to the corner to sleep. With Aizawa falling asleep, the class had basically started shouting. Most were raving about how they should be the class president. Two students' ideas for being class rep were shot down immediately due to Katsuki's bad attitude and Maita's proposal to shorten the girl's skirts. Things were a little chaotic until Ida stepped up. Quiet everyone. There is only one way to decide who should be the class representative. We should hold a vote to see who should lead the class. But it's only been a day though. No way anyone would vote for anyone else but themselves. Kaminari scratched the back of his head, wondering why Ida would bother suggesting it. Precisely why we should use democracy. 
The student to get more than one vote would truly be worthy of being the class representative. Surely enough everyone agreed to the idea. And once the ballots were in there are only two people with more than one vote. Izuku had three votes and Momo had two votes. Needless to say, he was wondering who voted for him. He had personally voted for Ada but he only had one vote, so it was easy to tell who one of his supporters were. D dang it, Ada was seen angrily shaking at his desk, while Achako was consulting him. Alright, it looks like the class rep is Izuku Midoriya and Vice is Momo Yeirazu. Congratulations. Aizawa had just woken up from his nap and congratulated his students with a bored tone. Said, students, were at the front of the room, being cheered by their peers. Izuku had a seemingly indifferent face but was just trying to process the fact that he had gotten three votes. While Momo seemed a little disappointed, and maybe a little bitter, that she lost by one vote. Ooh, I guess I should thank all of you that voted for me. I'll do my best to be a decent class president. Izuku began rubbing the back of his head. He really had no clue about what to say, much to Momo's annoyance. Lunch break. I can't believe I won that little election. The green-haired boy started scarfing down his lunch. At the table, he was joined by his friends Ida and Yuraraka as well as newcomers Kirishima and Mina. Doesn't surprise me, man. You were trained by Dante his freaking self. That's the reason you got my vote. Yes, Kirishima is right. Anyone who has earned the privilege to be trained by the greatest demon hunter of our time surely has the respect of most individuals. Ada added to the redhead statement. Yeah, but Ida I thought you wanted the position. I think you'd be perfect for it. I mean you got the glasses and everything. The table sweat dropped at Achako's reasoning. Being qualified for the job and wanting the position are two different things. Being able to make quick decisions and be able to show the backbone to stick with those decisions. As it is now I don't think I am ready to take that responsibility. Those are the reasons I voted for you Midoriya. I also believe the status will mature your personality. Izuku choked on his food. You don't think I'm responsible? Some of the contents of his meal were stuck to his face. You have been kinda reckless Deku. You're manly, but you took some dumb risks in that fight. Well, you do show off a little too much Midori. Mina giggle at the boy's shock as he didn't expect to be ganged up on. Ring attention all students. Security level 3 has been breached. Please exit campus in an orderly fashion. HM. Midori a quirked brow. What's up with Bell? That was all he got to say before he was swept away by a crowd of panicking students. Oh shit. He screamed as he was carried off into the swarm. The boy had been dragged into the halls of the school, being shoved and kicked along the way. Hell at one point he got pinned down and stampeded upon. Okay enough of this. In a burst of sizzling green energy Izuku launches himself into the air spreading his demon form's wings. Calm down already. You're the demon hunters of the next generation, start acting like it. This got everyone to look up at him and stall their panic slightly. He is correct. The demon boy looked over to see Ada, who happened to be by a window when the chaos stopped. It's only the media. We are in no danger. Thank you. So can we please just calm down and stop stomping the life out of people? A vein throbbed in Izuku's head, some minor killer intent leaking off him. All the students were more than a little intimidated by our protagonist. A few minutes after the massive horde of children was silenced, things started up back regularly and students were walking back to class. The group of five was walking together, Idia striking up some conversation. See Midoriya, you are perfectly fit to have a role as a leader. You can take command of a situation and get people to listen to you. Although, you should work on your people's skills. I'm still not too sure on that. But if it makes you happy to prove a point then I'll keep the position. The green-haired half-devil responded. Outside, at the gates of U.S. several pros a small mouse-like creature was standing, looking at the barrier. No reporter could have caused this damage. This damage is also far precise to be done by a quirk. Launch an investigation. We need to find that culprit. The gates of Yui had been completely destroyed. The layers to the gate were cut into several clean pieces, like a hot knife through butter. To many, this detail wouldn't seem that big. But to one crimson demon hunter, his blood ran cold. Why after all this time do you decide to show up again? Especially after you just off the map. I'll talk to some associates back in America about this principal Nenzu. I got a feeling we might be dealing with someone from my past. With that Dante walked off, the feeling of dread not washing out of his system. I'm gonna need a drink. On a rooftop of a near building the man with the brown faded cloak looked down. How boring. His taunt trailed off into the wind as he disappeared in a blink of an eye. Yeah, get them all together. Something important came up over here and I need to speak with them at the shop. Thanks, Morrison. Dante was currently in the teacher's lounge sitting on a couch, making a call to his longtime employer over the phone. After he hung up, he sighed and began to rub his face. I need some whiskey. He heard the door crack open and in came a deflated all might. Or Tashinori Yagi as he learned a while back. Heard you're making a trip back to the States. Isn't a little early to start using those teacher sick days. His death-like face making it hard to tell if he was being judgmental or sarcastic. Probably both. The skeletal man took a seat on the couch opposite of the man in red. 
says the guy who might actually need a couple of sick days. The white-haired teacher smirked for a second, before quickly dropping back to a serious demeanor. Yeah, I have to talk to some associates back home about this little school vandalism matter. I also need to talk to an informant of mine. He had some correct information and now he doesn't have to stay at my shop. This must be important if even you are considering backup. And why is this informant of yours staying at your shop? Let's just say if my hunch about who this guy is right, then I alone won't be enough to handle him. As for the informer, I didn't trust him enough to let him crawl back to wherever he popped out of. How long do you think you'll be gone? Hopefully this little business meeting won't take more than a few days. But considering the time it will take for my partners to gather it could be a while. Why is everything over here got to be like some complex manga? The two demon hunters sat in silence for a bit before Tashinori decided to make some small talk. I must ask a question. What even brought you here in the first place? Much less train a successor. Were you just bored? I came here due to some personal business. The informant from earlier gave me some enlightening tidbits. And the kid was just a nice break from said business. Dante began to stretch. So, you only view the boy as a means of entertainment. The son of Sparta narrowed his eyes at the blonde. Don't put words in my mouth. I care about the kid. I'm just telling you teaching him gave me a much need break. He then got up and started to walk out of the lounge into his Japan shop. Have fun teaching 40 kids about the aspects of being a demon hunter. With that said Dante was gone, leaving an annoyed All Might groaning at that fact. Better look at the script for tomorrow. The next day. Today class will be going on a small outing. We have a special lesson planned for today. The tired voice of class 1A's teacher had gotten their attention. It was their basic demon training period, but this time it was not All Might and Dante instructing the class. Many were actually surprised by this. This time All Might, myself, and one other individual will be watching over your progress. You all will be doing rescue training. Aizawa got out a small remote. You can take your hunter outfits but they might not be helpful in these kinds of exercises. Get suited up and ready to go. A bus will be waiting outside. All of the students began to move towards their respective draws to receive their costumes. It took little time before they were all suited up. Well almost everyone. Both Bakugo and Midoriya were in the UA gym uniform due to their respective suits being fairly damaged. The Ask Blonde still wore his gauntlets, while Izuku just bought a pair of gloves and his battle-damaged holster with his guns and sword. The students were making their way to the bus when Ida started to yell about how they should enter the bus. Ida as your class representative and or president. I'm asking you to cool your jets. The green-haired boy raised his hands in the calm-down motion while he sweat-dropped. He really should have just voted for himself. They had all gotten seated on the bus and started to drive off when Suyu Asui, the girl with a frog quirk, made her presence known to the freckled teen. I like to speak what usually comes to mind Midoriya. Izuku really didn't know how to respond to that. Who? Okay Asui. Call me Tsu. Anyway, I was wondering something. Mr. Dante said he trained you, but I want to know why he chose you. He doesn't seem like the type to just take on an apprentice. Yeah, you're right about that. I kinda just bumped into him a year ago. I asked an important question. He answered. Cue the sludge demon incident with Bakugo that happened, then flash forward five minutes after I tried to stupidly save him with no power and he said I just impressed him. It was a rather simple explanation, one lacking quite a bit of context, but it was a response nonetheless. Whoa, what act of manliness did you do to impress him? Kirishima questioned. I was crying hysterically and threw a backpack at the demon's face while desperately trying to claw out Kakin from its clutches. Huh. The entire class had to take time to process that sentence. That's all it took to impress the legendary devil hunter. I guess you could say I was lucky enough my stupidity got his attention. A smile of reminiscence was on the boy's face. Well with that power of yours you're sure to impress the fans. My hardening quirk isn't that flashy. I'll be lucky to get noticed. No way. Your quirk is totally suited for combat. You'll be a great hero Kirishima. You really think? Well on the topic of flashy and powerful quirks, my naval laser is both. Isn't it just marvelous? Yuga made a face of confidence at his own remark. Well it would be if it didn't mess with your gut every time you used it. The resident pink-skinned teen teased. Yuga's expression didn't change with the statement, but you could tell that took a blow to his ego. If there is anybody that has a flashy and powerful quirk, it's probably a tie between Todoroki and Bakugo, Mina put in her thoughts. Yeah, but Bakugo is much like a wild animal. He'll never get too popular, Suyu added. The hell you say frog face. You know it says a lot when we've only known you for a few days. But we've got that you have the personality equivalent of to that of a dirty sewer drain. Kaminari grinned. I'll smash your face in Pikachu wannabe. Izuku was enjoying the show, wishing he had a bag of popcorn. Fourteen years of karma I've been yearning for. All right, look alive kids. We're here. Eraserhead's voice came from the front of the bus. This is the USJ. The unforeseen simulation joint. Not Universal Studios Japan. 
Aizawa hated adding that last part, but he had been asked that every time he came here with first years. That's right, I built the place myself, from landslides to floods. This little spot has it all. A disembodied voice caught their attention. Turning around class 1 I saw a man in an astronaut suit walking towards them. This was none other than 13, a pro-demon hunter who mainly worked in support and rescue. I'm here to help you all with rescue training. As you may know, my quirk black hole is what I use to clear debris and rubble at scenes of mass destruction. It may not look like it, but my quirk is also very dangerous. One bad move and I could end up killing someone. This fact made everybody uneasy, especially a select few with destructive quirks themselves. That's why we're here. To help you learn control over your quirks so you don't make a mistake like that, Aizawa voiced out. He then proceeded to look around a bit before taking 13 over to the side. Izuku took notice of this and, even though he could not hear a lot of their conversation, he could tell it was about the missing teacher. After a minute the messy-haired man and the astronaut turned back to the class. All Might must not be showing up today. It looks like All Might won't be joining us today class. So we will be doing the exercise without him. The dry-eyed teacher stepped back to the sidelines as 13 decided to give one last long-winded speech about quirks and their use for saving people. Then he noticed something in the center of the facility. A swirling black void was gaining mass. Within moments it was the size of a small car and a plethora of bodies came out. Three stood out the most. A man with light blue hair with a hand mask covering his face, a large purple creature with its brain sticking out, and a misty villain that was once the portal who was in a formal getta. Huh, are those robots again? Those supposed to be part of the training. Everyone stay back. Those are real villains. Ah, I don't see the symbol of peace. Only too many bosses and a handful of grunts. The blue-haired one sounded bored. That is intriguing. The schedule did say he would be here with this class today, the formal portal villain said. So you're the low lives that use the press to break into the school. The racer head was preparing for an attack. He was clutching his capture equipment tightly. Well, it wasn't us exactly. Just one of my lackeys doing a side quest for me. He's quite good at being efficient. The young man started to scratch at his neck a bit. But I'm not here for a pointless conversation. Where is All Might? He then chuckled. Oh what the hell, a few corpses will probably get his attention. This statement really pissed off Aizawa. 13 get the students out of here. I'll hold them off. Kaminari if you can try to get a hold of the school with your quirk. Izuku put a hand to his shoulder. No way you can handle all of these guys by yourself. Your quirk isn't made to handle hordes of enemies. Let me help you. His teacher gave a lopsided smirk and replied. Kid you can't be a pro if you only use one trick. And I need you to help 13 protect the other students if worse comes to worst. With those words, the demon hunter rushed off to kick the asses his opponents. The green half-devil scoffed. I don't like it, but he's right. We, as students, are the priority right now. If even one of us die, what he's doing right now is pointless. All right people, let's get a move on. We need to get out of here and get reinforcements. He along with his 19 other classmates started to hustle towards the exit when they were stopped by the fancy mist man who teleported in front of them with a huge intimidating form. I'm afraid I can't let you do that, he said menacingly. Stand back kids. 13 activated his quirk to start sucking up the villain, which appeared to be working, until the villain used his ability to relocate the black hole behind the space-themed pro, thus having what looked like half of his body destroyed. H he got me. 17 out of the 20 students were now in a state of panic. What were they supposed to do? Their protector was fatally injured and they were surrounded by villains and demons. Well lucky for them, two of their calmer classmates were launching themselves at the yellow-eyed criminal. Die you misty bastard. Bakugo snarled as he was preparing an explosion. To his left Izuku had also jumped out, his handguns drawn and ready to fire. The purple figure, however, did nothing more than expand his body to create a portal, sucking the two of them in and dragged them off to who knows where. I suggest you refrain from following those boys' actions. He began to walk towards the remaining eighteen. Within moments he spread out more than half of the class, elsewhere in the USJ. Ugh, Izuku rubbed the back of his head. He took a look at his surroundings and noticed they were still in the USJ building, and based on the geography they were in the collapsed zone. Dozens of knocked over buildings, and both he and Bekugo were on the roof of one said buildings. That damn misty piece of shit. I'll be sure to crush him next time I see him. The ash blonde looked at his peer. You're here too. HN, what still need to follow me around nerd? Izuku responded with a glare and a gunshot. Time stood still as Katsuki was wide-eyed, a few strands of his hair floating down as he turned to look behind to see what was shot. The ash blonde was treated to the sight of a scarecrow-like demon frozen in place, inches away from slicing his neck and a hole between its eyes. The lesser demon soon faded to dust. The ill-tempered boy recovered from his shock quickly, a vicious growl released from his throat. Deku you bastard. Die. Izuku didn't even flinch as his childhood friend launched past him and blew away a horde of scarecrows that were making their way towards him. 
The boy let out a small chuckle, and here I thought you didn't care Kakin. Shut up idiot, I just didn't want to owe you anything. If anything you owe me now. The two boys started bickering about the who owed who and other dumb things, when they were now being surrounded by various demons, varying from frosts to fosts. They soon took notice about what was going on. How about this Kakin? Whoever kills more of these guys by the time they stop coming in, that person is superior. The blonde dropped his scowl and quickly replaced it with a smirk, cracked his neck and got into a fighting stance. Ha, huh? when did you grow a pair? Whatever, I'll play this stupid game, but we both know who's gonna win. We'll see hothead. With their final words shed both of the battle-hungry students leaped off into the fray. Bakugo and Midoriya were like a well-oiled machine, attacking enemies side by side and were reading each other's movements like well-written poetry. The boy quick to anger, launching violent explosions punches and kicks to anything stupid enough to get in his way, while the other was rapid firing his guns at the demons that were on his side of the area. They had cleared out the area of all the weak appetizers, before they got onto the main course. Larger demons started to appear and the two of them smirked. Izuku threw insurgents at a horde of demons, which impaled three at once, and used the hilt of his sword as leverage to jump up high enough to rain bullets down on another small group. Katsuki, on the other hand, used his quirk to get in close of fussed explosions with heavy punches to scorch holes through his batch of demons. He even delivered a palm strike to one of them and launched it so hard into a patch of small fire it exploded into a mess of blood on impact. The number of demons began to rack up again and the heavy hitters of class 1 have found themselves back to back. Hey Kakin, this has been fun and all, but I think it's time we got a little serious and get out of this place. Izuku then rested insurgents on his shoulder, green lightning was starting to crackle around his sword. That's the smartest thing I've ever heard you say Deku. Katsuki raised an arm pointing his gauntlet towards his foes. Without any other words, the two of them released devastating attacks, Bakugo sending out his nuke of an explosion, killing hundreds of demons in an instant. Midoriya slashed his sword horizontally. A massive arc of demonic energy shot out and completely obliterated everything in front of it. The collapsed zone was now looking a lot more like the landslide zone as the both of the one at Titans jumped off of the roof of the building they were on and headed towards the center of the USJ. So, I think I won, Izuku said as he rested his sword on his shoulder. As if nerd, I wouldn't lose to an extra like you. Come on man, I thought we kicked ass and enjoyed making demons look like idiots. I'm not at the very least supporting cast to you, the green-haired demon joked. Ah, I guess you're too good to be lumped up with those extras. You've worked your way up from being a useless pebble I can step on, to a boulder I need to destroy. The ash blonde grinned for a moment, but as fast as it came it immediately turned into his signature glare. But don't think for a second that this means you're better than me. Ha, huh, wouldn't dream of it Kakin. The moment of their improving bond was interrupted by the sound of a loud scream. Let's go Deku. That sounded like Mr. Aizawa. Bakugo started to break into a sprint with Izuku following close behind. I knew I should have helped him. Meanwhile, minutes prior, Aizawa jumped off to fight off some incoming demons and criminals, twirling his scarf and tangling his opponents with it then throwing them around like ragdolls. Boy, was it a therapeutic thing to do when you had a teaching job. The logical Roos teacher jumped out of the way, as a large incoming fist tried to pound his face in. I heard your quirk lets you erase transformation and emitter quirks. Even a small rumor that it can get rid of demonic power. The random cocky mutant type villain continued on. I'm guessing it doesn't work too well on mutant types considering I still have my freakish appearance. He tried to rush down the possible insomniac. But the smaller man slid under the larger man, wrapping his capture gear around his face and ramming said face into the ground. That's why I've developed methods for offenders like you. Aizawa's hair fell back to his shoulders, signifying the deactivation of his quirk. In the background of the whole fight was the blue-haired delinquent, staring at the scene with a mix of mild irritation and some respect for the man taking down his cannon fodder. I mean, the man was fairly average in terms of strength and was destroying them. Well, he's a pretty good mini-boss, but I figured out his attack pattern. Dashing off towards to the pro-hunter's direction the hand-themed villain started to join the battle. Noticing the newcomer Aizawa starts up his quirk again and shoots his scarf towards him and pulls him into a powerful blow to the gut. I'm guessing you're the brains behind this. It's kinda hard to tell. But every now and then your hair falls back down and you, for the most part, avoid attacks. You have a 23 second cool down period and it's increasing every time you strain your quirk. The blue haired man had grabbed his elbow in the attack and it was now slowly decaying. Pain shot through his arm and with a loud grunt through clenched teeth, Shota slugged his opponent in the face and jumped back. His quirk nearly destroyed my arm. This isn't really your forte isn't it eraser? You don't really have the stats for long duration battles, yet you dive in head first just to give some brats a few extra moments to live. You're a really cool demon hunting hero eraser head. He was smiling sinisterly underneath his hand mask. And to answer your question from earlier, I'm not the boss here. He is. He pointed a finger to an ominous figure looming over the pros retreated from. 
Behind the unkempt hunter was a beast of terrifying proportions, standing at nearly 8 to 10 feet tall and filled to the brim with purplish-black muscle. Its face was reminiscent to that of a bird's, with a pale yellow beak but with sharp jagged teeth and cold dead eyes. What was really unsettling was the brain that was on display. It was just out in the open. Aizawa made a move to dodge it, but it easily caught him by the arm. Eraser, meet Namo, an artificially made demon designed to be the anti-symbol of peace. Namo, would you kindly demonstrate why you received that title by thrashing him? The villain had an almost sickly sweet tone in his voice, as if he was a parent instructing a child to do a chore. Namu then proceeded to crush the teacher's head, as if it were made of nothing more than tissue paper and cardboard. The racer had let out a scream of pain. I'm staring at it directly, meaning that this thing isn't using a quirk right now. The creature's other hand was now pulling his head up, meaning this his base strength is enough to rival All Might's. His head then slammed into the ground, leaving a small crater in its wake. Shigaraki, the teleporting, well-dressed, mist-based villain had returned. What is it Kirajiri? Is 13 dead? The now-named Shigaraki asked. I managed to incapacitate him and managed to spread a few of the students. But some of the students are still guarding him and one managed to escape to get help. Huh. Shigaraki paused. I'd kill you if you weren't my ride Kirajiri. This blows. We can't face a dozen of demon hunters with this party members. I guess it's game over, for now, so let's get a move on. But leaving a few bodies behind might teach him a lesson about being late. He made a mad dash towards a small group of students who were hiding out near the water, which consisted of Achako, Suyu, and a derpy-looking Kaminari. And the decay villain was already within reach hands spread across the amphibian girl's face, but nothing happened. Hey, you really are a cool person. Turning his head back, Shigaraki saw that the down pro had managed to turn his head enough to activate his quirk. The right side of his face was buried in the ground and blood was pouring from the large cut on his forehead. There was a look of intense desperation in his one visible bloodshot eye. The creature was about to lift his head up again, ready to smash it back into the ground, but it stopped when a bullet pierced its skin. The creature hardly looked faced but turned its head to the direction of the gunshot. Everyone in the vicinity saw a certain green-haired devil hunter in training. The Tsu and Achako made their way out of the water as they dragged Denki along with them. They did not want to get caught again. Gone was any facade of the laid-back persona that Izuku usually carried. His face was deadly serious and his green eyes were glowing with power and anger. Hey you there, with the brain. Why don't you put down my teacher and fight me for a bit? Namu let go of Aizawa and slowly made its way towards him, an intimidating sight as the boy broke into a cold sweat. There's no way I can take this thing. I might be more geared towards heavy combat, but I lack experience and firepower. I have to keep my distance and look for openings. Izuku started firing at the hulking beast but bullets were proving to be an ineffective method, for the wounds they were leaving were healing as fast as they appeared on the skin of the creature. It was picking up speed as it started to charge at him, raising a massive fist to strike him down. The freckled teen tucked and rolled to the side as the Namu struck the ground, having trapped its fist in the ground. Izuku saw his chance to do some damage and quickly drew insurgents, hacking and slashing away at the monster's back, some chunks of flesh and blood being cleaved off in the process. What? He's actually taking on Namu. That's not possible. Kirajiri, get him away from our ace. The blue-haired villain ordered his lackey, said bartender nodded in reply but was thwarted by an enraged blonde. Katsuki was holding down the mist-like individual down by his metal neck brace. Figured you out bastard. You might be able to expand that substance to teleport things, but you had to have a body somewhere underneath all that. The collar was a damn obvious weak spot once I thought about it. Shigaraki was beyond mad and was about to rot the brat's face off, but was caught off guard when he felt a cold sensation around his legs and noticed they were frozen to the ground. A voice came from behind him, so your big plan was to kill All Might, but you only brought a handful of weak criminal and demon scum. It's rather ridiculous that you thought you could win with raw power from that thing alone. Todoroki was standing there, crossed-armed and a look of boredom on his face. The pure malice could be felt from the decay villain's form as he was about to disintegrate the ice around his legs, but Shoto merely froze his hands once they tried to get close to the ice. The villain quickly melted the ice around his hands and shot a look of annoyance towards his captor. Try that again and I might just encase your entire body. Shoto glared back to the older, criminal male. Back with Izuku, he had managed to weaken the demon severely and backed away once the monster pulled its fist out of the ground. Well, he thought he had severely weakened the Namu, but it barely looked phased and it was healing every cut and piece of flesh within moments. The gigantic creature let out a roar and charged at the freckled teenager again. He tried to jump out of the way however the Namu was too quick, and grabbed him by the leg and started to slam the boy several times into the ground. Bones were being broken, organs ruptured, and staying conscious was becoming a difficult task. Todoroki and Bakugo could only stare wide-eyed in shock at the absolute brutality that was in front of them. 
Shigaraki, on the other hand, was laughing with pride as he was regretting ever doubting his master's creation. After what seemed like a decade worth of pain Namu slammed Izuku's back into the ground one last time as it gave him a break to realize the agony he was in. The hunter in training was breathing heavily, near blacking out, but then the leader gave a fatal order, Namu, finish him off. Time seemed to move in slow motion to the two students holding down the villains as Midoriya was impaled by five claws to the stomach, blood being hurled out of his mouth, not even a second after the action happened. His eyes seemed to go lifeless as his limbs went limp. Deku, Midoriya. They were slack-jawed in terror as they witnessed the death of the student of the legendary Devil Hunter. Neither of them was prepared for the sight of death. Nama ripped its claws from the boy's gut and turned to look at the one of students holding its masters captive, ready to do the same thing to each of them, yet again it was shot in the back of the head. The four sentient people we astounded to see that Izuku was standing. His gym clothes were in tatters, blood dripping from his mouth, his hair was shadowing his eyes, and his right leg was twisted in a way that shouldn't have been physically possible. In his left hand was a gun and the right was his sword serving as a cane. We aren't done. Yet, he was breathing heavily. How? How are you still alive? Shigaraki was asking the question everybody was thinking. It's simple really, handjob. Izuku's hair was beginning to turn white. My soul was screaming out to me. To reach its ambition, his leg began to slowly realize itself. What to be some glamorous show-off who wants to look good for publicity? No, I simply can't leave while they're out there. While they're out there in the need of rescue. I can't drop dead yet, knowing they could die just because I decide to give up. Green lightning was crackling across his body, a small whirlwind swirling around him, his bangs parted slightly to reveal his right eye. He held a cold fury within that visible eye. He had put his gun back into his hip holster, only having his sword to his side. Shigaraki couldn't comprehend what was before him. Why don't you just drop dead right now? Rage was laced in his voice. Because I am a hero. Izuku was enveloped in green demonic energy, his form changing from human to devil. It was different from his usual devil trigger, he was much larger and had a metallic-like look to it with four wings sprouting out of his back instead of two. At the devil's elbow, joints were large neon green stingers that matched the radiant glow of his eyes. A bright green glow was seen where he was impaled and spread outward, making it look like his metallic skin had been cracked and the power of his being was being shown from within. He unfolded his wings and readied his new sword-like stingers. Round two, in a blur he was in front of Namo and had stabbed them straight in the chest of the opposing demon.